Good evening, race fans. Welcome back to Daytona International Speedway. It's time for round two of qualifying for the Firecracker 400, building off of last night's exciting single car runs. David Schildhouse, Landon Castle, and I don't know who that is in between us. That's, well, <laughs> that's not Parker Kligerman, but he'll be along soon enough. I, I think that's a step down for him, but uh, playing off of the Blake McCandless suit review, I guess we could say, Landon, that's... Uh, I think Parker looks better than that guy. No, no disrespect to that guy. Hotel manager. Was that what Blake called him? Uh, something like Some, that. Yeah. I think a hotel manager or something along those lines, <laughs> something slightly insulting, right? <laughs> well, Parker will be along soon enough, but we got a host of drivers here, Landon, everybody uh, who is elected to make another run. We've got over 50 drivers who are trying to set a second lap here tonight. Ha not happy with where they stood after last night's run. Of course, we locked in the top 20 drivers, but uh, there's a lot of guys in that nervous zone who are ready to put down one more lap. So uh, as uh, as we have a big field of drivers ready to do that, Landon, what do you think the keys are going to be here for tonight? I mean, so much is up in the air. We've got uh, a lot. If they couldn't get it done last night, what do you think uh, is, is prompting them to make another run tonight if they were decent yesterday? Well, I mean, I, I think that the weather is one thing that the drivers have been considering, David. Uh, so a lot of guys think that this first session is going to be faster than yesterday. It's it's not a whole lot different. Uh, it's still starting. Cars are going to roll about 12.30 p.m. in the sim. Uh, the, the temperature is pretty similar, but there's less humidity. So uh, the, the drivers have been feeling like there's more horsepower coming out of that, and the wind is a little bit calmer. Uh, the forecast does have the winds picking up a little bit later in the afternoon, so we'll kind of see what that looks like for the second half of these drivers. But I, I think that weather, it might be one factor for me. I think that it's who might have been practicing, you know, and put in some more laps. I think a lot of guys worked on their setups for a week, David, and got their cars where they thought it was good enough and then realized, oh, man, I need some more speed. And then it's a last uh, minute one day scramble to build your car, uh, to rebuild your car. I, I put in the chat uh, in Discord, you, how many of you guys have wholesaled your cars? And some drivers said some pretty emotional responses to it. So I could see a lot of drivers really picking up speed um, just going into the second day. And finally, David, I want to say there's a lot of pressure on the line right now. So all of that speed those guys may have found in the comfort of their own servers they have to back it up tonight when there's only one shot. Well, we talked a lot about that yesterday. Some of the times being reported by these drivers. I don't think we saw anything close to what some of those guys were saying uh, as expected. So uh, a lot to keep an eye on here for these drivers and, and uh, you know, a lot of nerves for sure. We thought we had nerves yesterday. Uh, we got a lot here tonight. So uh, no room for mistakes. That's the third bullet point there. Uh, and we saw a few mistakes made yesterday, Landon, a couple guys smacking the wall. Garrett Smithley comes to mind, couldn't complete his lap after hitting the wall out of four. Uh, and a few other drivers who encountered troubles where they just spun out completely. Got to take advantage of that redo, if you will, but certainly not a good lap made there. So again, no room for mistakes because there is no redo at this point. You've got to get this lap in. Yeah, this is it. Uh, this is it. You know, there, there's no room for mistakes. Yeah, as you can see, we've got 20 drivers that have locked into the field. These are the guys that executed on their their laps. Joseph Galato with the pole, uh, starting on the front row with Jake Nichols. So we've got a lot of heavy hitters in the field. We've got AJ Henderson, the controller king of the top 10. Good to see my e crew chief Brian Blackford. These are the drivers that get to hang out tonight. They're, hopefully, they're all just chilling, watching the broadcast. Maybe they've helped some of their teammates that are deeper in the field with some setups. Uh, but, but this is your chill group for tonight. Nobody can penetrate the top 20. Um, but, but it, it's, uh, it, it's going to be a tough night for these drivers right here. As we see Tony ball, Alec Martinez, Eric Smith, these are drivers that are standing on their times. So Dale Earnhardt jr. Who was 31st fastest yesterday in first round qualifying. Uh, I know he delivered, he deliberated heavily over his time this morning. Uh, <laughs> texted a lot with him back and forth he told me that he had a dream about the firecracker 400 last night so I, I think that this event is definitely in a lot of drivers heads right now and you, as you can see this is a group of drivers that are that are sitting on their times and just hoping uh that the pace is slower today so we'll see them up on the leaderboard as well 
Oh, yeah. We talked about the the drivers chilling. The top 20 absolutely are chilling. Something they couldn't do last night, uh, but they can definitely breathe easy tonight. But those drivers that we listed uh, who are standing on their time, some of them to me make sense. Uh, and some of them are, are a little bit of a head scratcher, I would say, of why they wouldn't be running a second lap, um, because I'm pretty sure it was very transparent who was and who wasn't going to be running a second lap. And you know where you stood in relation to those drivers. So uh, a, a couple of them, I would say, stand out to me that are surprised that they're not running a second lap. Some of them, I would say, like Tony Ball, Alec Martinez, Eric Smith, I, I would do the same thing. That I, I agree with their decision to stand on their times. Um, so, you know, for, for guys like uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Matt Everhart, I think they're in that danger zone. Maybe even Josh Parker uh, and, and Justin Lisenby, too. I think that low eight is probably right where you want to be. And you talk about the difference between a 42.814 and a 42.844. It's not a whole heck of a lot, but... Uh, that could be the difference. We saw a very slim margin from first to 20th yesterday. It could be even slimmer today to make it in uh, to, to the promised land. So, you know, it's uh, every driver's decision. They're going to have to live with it at the end of the day, and we'll see how it plays out. But um, a whole host of drivers, like we said, ready to run another lap here. But before we get to any on-track action, we got a new promo video for you. So check this out, and we'll we'll look for your reaction on the other side. into the tri-oval, the pace car is away, and the Firecracker 400 is moments away from receiving the green flag. White flag is out. They're in the final lap. Hey, we're rolling. Oh, yeah. Never mind. All right. Pretty cool stuff right there. Another great video. We had a great video yesterday. Another great one here. The guys at Eraser, man, I'm telling you, they're cranking out these videos looking really nice, Landon. <laughs> yeah, we just, we want to, we want to keep everybody entertained. I think there's a lot in store. All right. We, uh, so with that said, uh, now we got to turn our attention to the business at hand. We, we touched on it briefly. Now we've got second round qualifying, make or break time right here. Plenty of pressure last night for the 88 drivers who were looking to get in. Now it's going to be, how good of a lap can you run? Perfect, flawless. We talked about all the things yesterday. Is there anything new tonight, Landon, that, that the drivers need to be extra focused on that they weren't already doing yesterday? Or is it the same platter of things that they have to get done right? Man, it, I think it's just a new emotion. You know, the, there's, uh, it, it's, an, it's a different set of unknowns, David. I mean, last night, I think you knew in your own little bubble what you could run and the work that you put in on your car and your setup and everything. Uh, and you put it out there and you put it out into the world and you saw, and now you have a reference to go off of. You have your own times. You have everybody else's times. There's probably been a lot more communication amongst drivers. So I, I think it's just a different emotional dynamic. And then the fact that this is their last chance to get into the race. Oh, oh look, look, look at this guy. Look How are you doing? Guy? Wow. Uh, yeah, no, don't have the jacket. I, so I had to run up to the booth here, um, guys, right above Daytona, uh, funny enough. And so it took me a little bit. I apologize. Uh, I'm a little sweaty, but we're here. We're ready. I'm ready to see some cars qualify. I heard you talking about, you know, the difference between last night and tonight. And Landon, I think you said it very well when you said basically last night was what you didn't know. And now this is about what you do know. And what we know is that there's the times that were there. Here's what you ran. Could you, can you improve on that time? And can you find what you know you need to do now to get into the field? And that's going to be the big part here. Glad you got up here safely. Didn't trip running up the stairs. That's uh, always an important thing. Safety first, Parker. Safety exactly. first. Exactly. It's a hike. It's a hike up here, guys. <laughs> Oh, we're glad that you could make it. It wouldn't have been the same. We had some uh, we had some fellas sitting in your place there, but you see tonight's uh, 
um, order that they're going to be rolling off in. The man who uh, was last to go last night will be the first to go tonight in, in Michael Rambler jeans. Um, we highlighted the speed that we expected to see out of him, and he couldn't deliver that lap, so he'll be first out tonight uh, to put down a lap. We'll see what's different here, boys, but... You know, I, I got a lot of feedback, and I'll, I'll say this, a, a huge welcome into everybody watching on Twitch, uh, on Facebook, and on Twitter. We're so happy to have you here. If you want to get more involved in the conversation, of course, like we've been doing, hashtag Firecracker400 on Twitter to extend this conversation outside of the chat boxes as well. Your thoughts, your pictures, everything we've seen, the competitors chiming in too. Um, but uh, I've gotten so much feedback uh, from the drivers themselves with every every uh, reason they didn't go faster yesterday and what they're going to do different today. I, I'm pretty sure I heard every excuse in the book. Well, <laughs> those are those are the variables. I mean, that's that's what happens when you have this many drivers and this much weather and open setups. I mean, it's it, there's no telling. That's the thing. It's uh, you know everyone's going to find some reason that they didn't go fast and it's never your fault that's racers in a, in a t and then there's sim racers which sim racers love static you know the same everything being the same and for some reason you know it's because it's the measure of talent apparently but the funny thing is you have so much static that having different weather and having different track conditions and that being variable and having open setups is actually some of the things that most mimic real life so I think mm -hmm. that's uh, that's why we uh, you know design this the way we are, and I like hearing those excuses because it means we designed it right. Yeah, I'm with you on that. It tells you that uh, that it means something to them if they're uh, if they're really examined. I mean, I wonder how much sleep some of these guys got. To be honest with you, uh, <laughs> those especially didn't have a good run last night. They're probably uh, you know losing some sleep over that, or putting in the practice time, or or getting together with their teams to figure out you know all right, here's what we had, here's how it ran. Uh, and it wasn't good enough. What do we have to do? So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if some of these guys came back out with even less stable cars than what we saw yesterday in an attempt to find some speed. But here goes Michael Jeans uh, landing, rolling out onto the track. And uh, we'll see him getting up through the gears. And hey, this is crunch time right here. Yep, this is a driver that, that's got to go. I mean, Michael was, uh, you know, putting on a lot of time. We've seen the work. Uh, we've seen the effort. We've got the track temp is at 134. It's a little bit higher than it was yesterday at the beginning of the first session, um, at the beginning of qualifying. I mean, so uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see some. See how these stats stack up. And we should notice at the top we got the uh, speed and mile per hour up there. We've got the RPM as well. It was a big uh, request from a lot of viewers last night. We were able to implement that through our production team overnight, which was awesome. Great to see. Look for a couple key uh, numbers here, about 213 or so. That's two, yeah, there it is, 213 to turn one, and 215 to 216. If you see it flickering that 216 into turn three, that means they're really on a heater. Now, those were certainly the metrics that we were looking for yesterday as the day went on. It seemed to be steady throughout, uh, throughout the day. Those were the speeds that really the top times were putting down, and you see there, uh, just uh, just tickling 215 right there for jeans. It's a little bit tidier line, I think, than what he ran last night. Gets it right to the yellow. Eclipses the yellow line. He's loose out of four. That might hurt him a little bit. Uh, again, every inch matters here around this racetrack. Across the line he goes, slides it down to the inside, and a 42906 is not uh, is not going to be the lap. And that's just. Uh, not the speed that I know he was expecting. It's not going to be the birthday gift that he was expecting either. It is his birthday today, but just uh, unfortunate. Couldn't get the lap together. About a hundredth of a second faster than Michael went yesterday. So, you know, even though that's not what he's looking for, that could be a barometer of what the track has. So we've got the 444 lined up, ready to go here. That's Monon and Rahman. I like well, you, the. Uh, I, I do I, want to yeah, point out, David. Um, our pylon on the left side is already uh, reflecting the drivers that. Um, this is we've got Beckham with me here on camera. My son yeah, just got back. Booth. Yeah, we've got a guest in the booth. Oh, now he's hiding behind the, the chair. Um, you know, I do want to point out the pylon. Uh, we've already got the drivers populated that have held on their time. So uh, these are the guys. Tony Ball, obviously. Um, 
lost out to a tiebreaker, ended up 20, 21st at the end of the night last night, Alec Martinez, Eric J. Smith. So these are the drivers that um, are probably the most nervous for a little while. Easy to follow along with right there. Very easy to follow along with. So you'll have a, a, a constant idea of the top, uh, the top 23, that cutoff line at the bottom. That's really what we're going to be keeping an eye on. So as these times slot in, that's what we're going to be looking at. So for, uh, for Amon down into turn number one, he goes 212. Didn't see the 213 there, Parker, that we're looking for. I don't, I don't think that's going to be enough. It's, uh, unless he's carried a lot through the corners, but I'm seeing 202 on the exit of turn two. I want to see that more around 203, 204 miles an hour um, to really put in you know, a fast lap time. It's only, it just touches 215 down to turn three, but you want to see a little more than that. It looks smooth. I just don't quite think the pace is there. Uh, you know, sometimes the they're a little slower. They are a little slide off of Ford. The uh, the slower the slower they are, the nicer they look sometimes. So he ran a yesterday. He ran a 43.00. That's a 43.05. That's gonna slow him down. At. Parker, what do you think about if the track is slower today? We had all but seven, eight, nine cars. Uh, give up their time from yesterday and choose to rerun. I mean, this this if the track is slower, this could be a complete bloodbath of just backing up times to get to that forty third. Uh, I mean, that would be, be quite a an interesting storyline. Yeah, I mean, it really would because now you've got guys. It, it's going to bring so many more drivers into play that were forty sixth, forty seventh yesterday. If they can just back up what they ran yesterday, it might put them in the show. Well. I, I think that was such a you know tough portion of this was that you had drivers and we were getting hit by so many drivers being like hey what's it gonna be what should I do this sort of thing and you know we're being nice promoters so, hey hi Beckham uh, we're being nice promoters we're trying to you know be at least helpful in some respects but you know the thing is none of us knew and and this is the risk they're gonna take and some think you know what. I did the best I could do yesterday. I'm not going to top that, so so be it. If I get beat, that's all I had anyway. And then I think there's some that thought, you know what? There's more out there. I can get it, and that's who's going to go out here and rerun. But if the weather isn't there, if the speed isn't there, you, at least you tried. And you can't, you know, you can't put yourself for. Oh, Gable gets real loose. Oh man, down off of two sideways. Just like yesterday, this is one of the drivers who uh, spun out completely down in turn three. Oh. Nearly lost the car there in one and two. That's going to absolutely destroy his lap. Uh, he'll get it finished up here, but again, it's going to be a heartbreaker of a lap. Not going to be good enough to get into the field for Marshall Gable. And uh, something that I was curious if, uh, if these guys were going to try and tweak on these cars to get them even faster and then make them a little less stable as a result. And it looked like that bit Gable right there. So two nights, two, uh, two losses of control for Marshall. And ultimately, it's going to be a 43.839, which will leave him on the uh, on the outside and uh, all but certainly relegate him to the Firecracker 200. And that's tough. I mean, that's a tough one for Marshall. The track temp is up right now. A lot of these drivers got to be feeling nervous. You know, we've got Connor Horn next. He, he's one that I feel like is is definitely has the speed in him. Um, but the the track isn't there right now. I mean, he ran a 42.97 yesterday, so uh, it'll if 9.78. So let's see what Connor's got. So far, everyone who's hit the track, Parker, has been slower. <laughs> yeah, I. Well, uh, that is. Hey, that's that's the risk you take. You know, that's why it's two round qualifying. This is just like it was back in. The late 80s, you had the risk of, you know, sitting on your time versus rerunning. And it's something, you know, we don't have a lot of experience with in real life these days. But, wow, if you, uh, you know, if what a, what a high intensity, high pressure pack situation to be in. I just can't believe it. I could imagine. Makes me glad I'm up here and not down there doing that. I, I don't like those situations, man. I've, ugh. Brings back some bad memories from uh, from from past years in sim racing for me, where I had to I had to execute in qualifying, and I, far too often I just outthink myself and and fail. So I'm glad I'm up here in the booth with you guys instead of down there trying to execute a lap. I would have rather just raced my way in, you know, and <laughs> and uh, and been done with it. But uh, 
Well, look, Connor, oh, but then if you had to you. race your way in, it, David, if you had to race your way in, you'd be you'd be upset because there'd be other factors. There's a driver that could wreck me. What if it wasn't even my fault? <laughs> Connor's got to always. put together a nice three and four right there. I think. There's always something to be uh, that that didn't go your way, right? Oh, he clipped that grass right there. Very nice, but again, not a fast lap. Forty-two point nine nine eight is uh, is going to be the lap slower. record for him. This is, uh, we have Colinix next, who he had a rough lap yesterday. He, so, uh, Alex was one of our drivers that spun on his outlap yesterday. And we, we watched that entry to turn three on your outlap was definitely really slick if you got your right side tires above the white line. So, um, Alex hopefully looking for some redemption. He knows that he's capable of better than that, of, of, of a better uh, effort, Parker, Looks like you had to stop at the uh, local provision what, supplier. What is, this? Oh, oh, is, that, is that why you're late? Nope. This was actually delivered by uh, by the girlfriend, but very nice. Very nice to Shannon. Oh, she, she, we took her off of the cone retrieval duty, and she was nice enough to yep. bring me a white cloth. So you reconciled uh, everything from yesterday, so you're not uh, sleeping on the couch? <laughs> exactly. Well, we, we're all good now. But let's see. <laughs> hey, you mentioned about Alex Kalinix. He... Uh, he was really loose into three on his outlap yesterday. All right, so he makes it through that time, right? So I'm, I'm already feeling this is a better lap. He's made it farther than he did yesterday. He had to turn around backwards. Oh, actually, I think he rolled his car off the banking yeah. yesterday, but I'm liking the speed at the end of the straightaway here. 12, 13, 14 into turn one. I don't know if we've seen 214 in the turn one, have we? We have not. He was very confident the other day about his speed. So. Might be a big lap. I mean, this is for your 88th position driver from round from first round qualifying in a, a good looking car. 216 into turn three. This actually could be a monster lap. If I'm one of those drivers that stood on my time, I'm watching this one closely because this is absolutely showing the speed at least to beat. It's quick, very quick lap right here. This is gonna make some drivers nervous. Wow, uh, yeah, there's a there's a good time right there, forty two point eight seven zero. Ooh, that's, that's a pretty now, good time right there. He, here's the thing, eight seven zero yesterday would have put you fortieth. So that is a a, a heroic effort for Alex compared to where he was yesterday. But if the track is at all as strong as it was yesterday, he's going to be biting his nails. I mean, that that's a yeah. that may not be good enough. I mean, he's, he's going to have to watch this thing to the very end. Yeah, I, I mean, the strongest effort of who we've seen hit the track so far, for sure. Uh, a little bit quicker than Michael Jeans. Um, but, you know, we, we it took a while for us to sort of get an idea of what sort of speeds around the track we would need to see to see a fast lap. Right now, he is the gold standard as uh, uh, as Mike Rasimus goes out onto the track. But uh, that's a good lap. I mean, Erasmus rather. Yes, uh, that's a good a good recovery lap. I would say for Alex, he's got to come away feeling pretty good about that. Yeah, I mean, at the very least, if he misses this the 400, it I would imagine put him pretty far up the the grid in the 200. Definitely, I think Kevin McAdams in the chat not feeling like that's enough so i think we should uh we should mention that our good buddy there nicholas morse actually i think he put out on twitter that they believed it 43rd place was gonna be something around an 87 3 so if i remember correctly guys um please please feel free to correct me if i'm wrong but if that's true i mean that's gonna be right there at it so for alex colony so either you know if you're uh, if you're just outside that 873 if that comes to fruition then uh you know that would be the poll for the firecracker 200. one thing to point out to parker in the chat is we see mike rasm is finishing his lap fake 500 driver wow nice lap well that's a good one top of the 42. board 86 for mike that's a that's a big improvement as well from yesterday and these guys have hit on something. I, I, I've talked with a couple of there. drivers throughout the day today that had told me that they had found anywhere from uh, a half a tenth to, to three quarters of a tenth from yesterday 
uh, in their testing sessions and their environment that they ran in. And that's, I mean, that's a pretty significant pickup. And, and you know, so for them, if they can go out and execute that, that could, that could be a very big jump. But those are two very nice laps back to back uh, as Garrett Pick hits the track right here. Yeah, it was about 200th gain for Mike. And guys, I just want to uh, let the viewers out there know we're talking about the Twitch chat. I'm also monitoring the Facebook chat on Eraser GG. So if you uh, are watching this on Facebook, you want to chat to us directly, just comment in the Eraser GG, uh, you know, live stream there from the Facebook page. And I'm there commenting, responding, and I'll respond on the broadcast as well. Well, thanks, Parker. Thanks for doing that. That's awesome. I thought right. I would chime in. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Let's get the conversation rolling. People are here. They want to see the intrigue. They want to see the drama. They want to see who makes it. It's, I mean, over half the field requalifying, so it's a pretty big deal. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, a little bobble from Garrett there. See if that costs him any speed down this back stretch. Tidy. It's a tidy line through oh, the corner right there. And he's got to chase Stepping it right the there. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. God, that thing looks squirrely. Oh, yeah. I think we lost it. <laughs> like, yeah. we really lost it. It, it, it out of the server. Basically. He knew it was over. <laughs> yeah. Lead ejection. The, I don't. Is that the Alt F4 uh, exit there? Is that yeah. even possible? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's, oh. that's a classic right there. Classic maneuver right there. Very classic. Well, hey, look, he pulled off something we all wish we could do in real racing, which is that when you know you're about to hit the wall, exit the vehicle uh, before it's about to hurt. And he pulled that off <laughs> flawlessly. I don't think he wanted to be in that position, but hey, what a uh, Still, what skill. That's, that's a uh, that's a good way to, uh, you know, tick off the race promoters, Parker. Mm, it is. I would think so. If only we knew yeah. who those guys were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we didn't write a rule. <laughs> How do you penalize a? How do you penalize a guy? <laughs> oh man! So I was looking at Brad Slaughter here. He pulled out onto the track and then stopped. About a thousand feet past uh, where he came back. Oh no! Uh, up onto the track and now now he's up and rolling again. So. Um, oh, and that's. That's tough. That's gonna hurt his get up to speed. I would imagine. Uh, Brad yeah. yesterday was 45th with a 42.884. So. It doesn't help his cause, that's for sure. You'll take every uh, every foot of asphalt to get up to speed that you can around here. You definitely would. It's uh, it's imperative you do that. It's imperative to get through the shifts correctly. It's just all the little tiny things that make a big difference. Track temp right now, 137 degrees. Landon, I think that's higher and than yesterday. That's hotter than that's hotter than we've seen in tire qualifying. So these ra these drivers really have their work cut out for them uh, here today. I know there's a little maybe a little less wind than we had yesterday, but this is uh, it's going to take some serious effort, some serious speed if you want to uh, you know overtake what we saw yesterday. 216 again into turn three. So maybe that wind has helped a little bit down the back stretch with some you know straight line speeds, but I don't know. Right on the yellow line, might be hurting them in the corners. Might have even clipped the apron. Yeah, it, you know, it's almost like the, the extra straightaway speed. Wow. Well, forget what we were talking about. He just went top of the board with an 837. <laughs> well, not top of the board, but that well, does top move of this up. board. <laughs> it top puts of this 24th. Board. Yeah. It puts a 24th on the grid. So, Brad, I. This we've seen so far in round two is what we've seen. He, he's got to feel. Yeah, he's got to feel pretty good about that that's a half a sec a uh, half a tenth pickup that's from a good yesterday. lap right there imagine i mean you want to play the game of ifs i mean imagine if he had gotten up to speed fully like everybody else could have been like a low eight which would have maybe gotten him into the top 20 or 21st there so uh you know that's the nice time lap. being uh being in the low eights high sevens what it took to be in the top 20 last night so that was a, that was a really solid lap Oh, that was a very, very good laugh for Brad Slaughter Jr. in that number 81 machine, and that'll 
give way to Alonzo Morales now hitting the track. We look at the Blue Emu onboard cam as he works down the back straightaway building speed. Hot, hot racetrack. Uh, for uh, Parker, let me ask you this. And, and for those who maybe are new to the sport, don't know so much about it or trying to learn, when you have a hot track condition, what does that do to these cars? What does that mean? I missed you there. David, say it again. I was saying for, for those who are new to the sport, possibly are trying to learn when we talk about a, a racetrack being hot, how does that affect the car? What does that do to the drivers? I just, you lose grip. Uh, whether it's real world or the sim world, heat is the um, is the enemy of speed and the enemy of grip. And heat on the racetrack just makes it slimier, slipperier. The oils come up, and that's simulated great by i racing uh, throughout their entire service. And that's what we have in real races, is what we fight. So the colder the temperatures, the faster you're gonna go. The more grips can be in the racetrack. But uh, it's not always pin perfect for anyone in racing. So you're always gonna have to deal with adverse conditions. Ooh, big slide there at the exit of the lap for Alonzo Morales. Hey, an 8.20. Faster still. That's Faster. pretty good. Yeah. Really all right, so we've seen a streak of drivers. What, the last four drivers have all gone faster than the previous one, right? Makes some guys nervous now. Wow. That, those are That's another very solid lap, a low eight. That's a lap. I think you can breathe easy with a low eight, right? I think you can. I don't I, know. I mean, I, I believe so. I believe you can. I'm going out in that limb, Landon. I mean, I'm going to look. I'm, I'm looking right now at what Alonzo ran yesterday. I'm trying to find him. Well. As you look Alonzo ran an 87 yesterday, 872. So an 80, it's almost a tenth, uh, a seven hundredths of a second pickup. I, I don't know. I think there's some drivers that are going to be nervous about that because they're going to judge off of him and say, well, you know, if you're if you're Joshua Chin, uh, you know, Nathan Rabadabadu, Gary Sexton, <laughs> Malik Ray. I mean, these are drivers that are looking at a, a guy that's six, seven spots below them thinking, uh, you know, do I have that in me? Even, even you know, go up to Eddie Kerner, right? Uh, 24th, or Eric, let's let's talk about Eric Smith, who's standing on his time at a 42.814. Um, I mean, that would pretty much put you in the danger zone of a lot of drivers. Um, I think we just got to talk about the one uh, that most people are probably wondering if he's going to make it or not. Uh, his name suddenly changed on the pylon, but that is Dale Earnhardt Jr., who's now Dale Jr. on our pylon. Falling at 28th. It's great. On Oh, 887. That's a good lap. Not a bad lap. Not a bad one. I mean, again, I, that low eight, I think, is, is where you, you breathe a little bit easier. A high eight, I'm not so sure that you... You feel as comfortable with that, but uh, you know. And that's a ten seen, pickup you know, from yesterday for Gary. That's a, I mean, that's a good pickup. That's certainly a good pickup. If you can improve, I think you feel that your decision to run was validated, right? Obviously, I think that's the the general sentiment that any driver is going to tell you. If they went faster, it was a good idea. But then you have to evaluate how much faster they went, and was it fast enough uh, to get into the microcosms of of that decision? But I think from the last four or five drivers we've seen. It's possible. I mean, we've seen a seven, you know, a seven hundredth pickup. That's pretty significant. Pretty pickup is significant right now. So, <laughs> yeah. I think uh, they're all big. They're all big, big pickups. But um, it's it's gonna be. Does anyone, you know, do we see this consistently? If it's one, two, three, four here, or there, and then most people run the speed they ran yesterday, then, you know, it's not a big deal. But if we see this consistently, then this could change the face of this field completely. And that's what we just got to see. We haven't seen enough cars yet. We're going to see it as we get 25 cars in this, what the real, you know, makeup of this session is looking like. Yeah, Mitch Rolo here looking again from the Blue Emu onboard cam, working through the bankings of one and two. You see how much that car moves around. Good little tidy lap here as he works down the back straightaway. I glued like that the car, bottom, though. Really. really glued to the bottom. I think that's something I've seen out of more cars today than we saw last night. 
uh, getting a nice entry into three and just hugging that yellow line. We saw a lot of the guys trying to avoid the bumps down there. A lot of these guys are just saying to heck with it. They're riding the bumps. It's another another one glued to the bottom. It'll be interesting to see, see what kind of speed comes out of a, a comfortable looking lap. Even less Two. slide. Ooh. Uh oh. It's getting tight, guys. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you, I, I think that that pretty much makes me feel like you're your bubble time is going to be a really low 80. I don't think it's a mid 80. Mm. What did Dale Jr. run? <laughs> <laughs> Jr. ran a mid 80. He's at an 849. I'm going with mid 80. It's going to be mid 80, <laughs> all right? I think an 849. I, I don't know. I mean, it, you're going to have to see some of these guys because these are all guys that had were behind Dale. You know, and Dale is a significant a mark for us. Not just because, um, you know, he's a great topic of conversation and a Hall of Famer and we'd love to have him in the show. Uh, he's a great topic because he's he's the one of the last drivers that held his time that was inside the top 43. So, you know, between him and Matt Everhart, uh, those are the last two drivers that, you know, could kind of be shooting themselves in the foot by standing on their time. Yeah. Well, I uh, I don't know. I, I still I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced it's not going to be a high. I think we're seeing some of the quicker cars right now, but I still think it looks pretty hot. I know the wind is down, but it does. You know, it's a pretty hot track. And if you haven't found something or you don't nail it better than you did last night, I just don't see why you would go faster as we watch uh, Logan Hagerman right now go around. He looked a little bit all over the place in one and two. I don't know if this will quite have the speed. Guys, the track temp is climbing. Oh, and Logan is way, way up the track. He's got a couple tents he needs to pick up from yesterday. He ran a 43-18-187. Uh-oh. Sideways. The cone yeah, yeah. goes. He picked up. Who's on cone duty yesterday. tonight? Well, it's, it was going to say it's Mrs. Castle, but she just gifted some subs. So she, we do have good phone service here, uh, Wi-Fi. Well, actually, we, why would we have Wi-Fi or phone service in 1987? That's impossible. In Daytona. So, <laughs> uh, You're coming to us from the future? <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Castle, for the gifted subs. Indeed. If you got a gifted Castle. sub from Mrs. Castle, let her know you appreciate the generosity and uh, and give her a shout out and a thank you as well. Um, Jail Jr. in the Rota. chat just says that Dale thinks he's going to end up 49th. So Ninth. he just Dale. left a comment in the chat. He's a little oh. pessimistic about that. I Yeah. He, he, he texted me before and said 48th. I don't know about that. He's gonna be fine. Mm. I don't. I don't see with well, the track temps going up right now. We're at 138 degrees. It almost tipped 139 for a second. I know this wind is a little slower, but it's actually gone up about a mile per hour. I don't think these are favorable track conditions uh, for speed. I think we're just seeing some of the faster cars that maybe didn't have nailed their lap yesterday, are nailing it now. They're getting the lap done, but I don't think that that's uh, there's you know basically 20 cars worth of that right now. I just don't see it. Look at Aaron Smith rolling around here again, right on the bottom. So, I mean, we saw cars yesterday riding around that middle, trying to avoid those bumps landing. Why do you think we see all these guys bottom feeding today? I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's maybe just that perfect execution. Uh, maybe there is an optimal line down there. Um, and that's could be where some speed is coming from. Just more track experience under pressure here. Aaron Smith goes to improve on his lap time. He was 58th yesterday. 42.98. Let's see what he does. Ooh. I love those Eight, slides. Seven, four, little pickup there for Aaron. Ooh. Just tightening up the entire field. It's. I mean, we knew the eights was going to be tight. We knew the eights would be tight. But uh, I still say it's, at le it's going to be at least a mid eight that's going to get you in the top 43. I know it. I know it. He knows it, he says. He I, knows yeah. it in his heart with, of hearts. With all the conviction in the world, I can say it will be a mid-eight. I know it. 
Are you willing so to put Dale a wager on that? Be, well, yeah, well, I'm down. Will Dale be, you know, essentially <laughs> uh, 44th? And then the mid eight right in front of him will be the one? I don't know. But I'm a hopeful <laughs> promoter and saying he'll be it. Nick Holland here. Uh, that was not a, uh, that was not optimal. I don't know if you guys caught that. He caught the wall getting up to speed no. there coming out of turn two. Not see that. Yeah, he caught the wall, scrubbed some speed and damaged the car a little bit there. That's the first time oh, we've man. seen that. Not optimal for Nick Holland. No, that is not going to be. Let's see, just trying to run real high. Oh, just was trying to use all the racetrack, getting up to speed. That's like the, the biggest, you know, nightmare you could have. With Daytona qualifying land is where you go out there more than missing a shift. I think sometimes is like, especially the first couple times you go out, maybe in those you know from the off season you go out and you do a Q run and you're right next to the wall and you're like, man, I'm pretty close to that wall. You're shifting to third right as you come off turn two. You want to nail that shift and it's like that wall could just come up at any time and grab you and sure enough. Look at the damage on his car, Parker. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I mean the guys are gonna have to pull that out. That's that's probably a tire rub as well. Mm -hmm. I would imagine. Yeah, and you're going to be with that kind of damage. It could even be a backup. Uh, I'm not saying he's not going to be in the Firecracker 400, but maybe for the Firecracker 200, if he doesn't have the speed, it doesn't look like he does. And of course, takes our cone. I think they're just making it into a joke at this point. Yeah, I think they're, they're doing that on the purpose. drivers. Every time yeah. they hit the cone, charge them. That's yeah, the those cones are 50 bucks a piece. Yep, every time. Your entry fee was 25 <laughs> bucks. It now costs you 50 for hitting the cone. Thank you. <laughs> Good promoter and we have to right pay there. Shannon to run out there and put it back too. So yeah, and she's about one hundred and eighty dollars uh, an hour. So wow, for cone duties. Yep. All right. Well, that's going to be Nick Holland's lap done and dusted. There. That's going to leave uh, Dylan Thomas next to roll out there with the not wins we discovered yesterday. Not wins, but it's Woods right. uh paint scheme. <laughs> the non wins wins paint scheme. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good, pur uh, good purple color though love it, it matches yeah, the it, theme. That's, that's good right so now that's we good. have 43 cars that have tried yep. so we have a bubble time up there it's 43 838 and that'll that'll shift i mean obviously that that lap belongs to to marshall who had uh nearly lost the car on his lap so he'll be the uh, unless something horrible happens here with Dylan Thomas, he'll be the first one truly knocked out of uh, the top 43, and that bubble time will continue to shift as more times slot in. But uh, now we have the true bottom end benchmark. Uh, going back to that wager, Parker, what do you want to put on this thing? Do uh, you want to put a truly on it, a, a white claw? What do you want? A white claw? Uh, well, I mean, that's up to you, bud. What's your favorite? What's your favorite uh, after, You know, late evening beverage of choice? Whatever you're buying. All right, <laughs> deal. White Claw it is. I've never actually had a White Claw, full disclosure. You've never had one? No, Where have you been no I've never had one. What rock are you living under? Well, there's a lot of rocks out here in Arizona. Uh, pick one. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to change that. All right, so so wait, let me get the bet right here. As, uh, as Dylan Thomas completes his lap at a 42.95, um with a two so uh not not in that eight range but uh, that will indeed send marshall gable down to the firecracker 200 as he'll be bumped out of the top 43 for thomas uh, sort of a nervous lap there that's uh probably going to be on the outside looking in as well still a couple tenth pickup uh from yesterday for dylan you know i just got a message from alex colinix who told me that that track is really slow right now so we're seeing a lot of drive drivers pick up their speed from yesterday but alex is saying that he was running 42 82s earlier feels like the track is slow so i, I don't are parker if you're somebody um that is sitting and watching and you're, you're maybe 10 cars to go um are you adjusting your setup at all? You know, maybe any, any crew chiefs in the chat, can you share some insight into that? Well, yeah, I think if you have teammates out there, you know, we saw uh, Nick Morrison, the whole HPM crowd, you know, the three of them went at different times and they all, the last car to go was the fastest. So you got to think he had some speeds. We look at this Nexus Esports car here of Nathan Rabadoobadoobadoo, what, what do we call it there? <laughs> we call him Rabadoobadoo because we don't Rabidabidoo. really know how to say his last name. Yeah. 
pretty awesome. I love the look of this car. Incredible look for this car. But we've seen a lot of these Nexus Esports cars. You got to think they're all talking to each other, saying, "This is what the conditions are. This is what I experienced." And for the next car, trying to help them out. Parker, this is one of our first drivers that last night uh, he was 30th. So you know, we talk about Dale Jr. holding his time. Nathan, had he held onto his time, he had a tie with Dale Jr. and he won that tie. But he elected to give up his time and go back out today. So if he goes slower than he went yesterday, that's a that's a big loss a, for Nathan. It's a net loss, as we say, uh, yep. in the business. I'm not sure how that tra that lap looked. Oh. Eight six eight. That is slower. It is slower. That is a net loss. Yikes. Now this is getting interesting. Man. Um, what, what was his lap yesterday? He went a 849 yesterday. He was 30th. Oh boy. That's a, that's a eight. What did he just run? 868. 868. Eight, eight. Eight, eight. And 868 eight would have put him 40th um, yesterday. Mm. I'm telling you. The track is not faster. We're, the, the faster times we've seen is drivers who basically messed had up a lot to speed the game. They had a lot of speed to gain. Something went amiss yesterday. That's what we're seeing. And I do not think to, you know, why Dale Jr. is not going to end up 49th as being one of our last cars that didn't, you know, that stood on his time. I believe because you're not going to have 20 cars that find all that much more speed. You know, I, I just, I don't see it right now. I think this is, when we see cars go faster under these conditions, that is mm -hmm. someone that tells me they just didn't have it right yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that too. Uh, so for uh, for Nathan Rabideau, uh, perhaps outplaying himself on that one. We'll 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 see how it uh, how it goes for him. But boy oh boy, if he if his time yesterday would have gotten him in, and his time today keeps him out, that's that's about the worst case scenario that you could come up with. Is uh, Jabo Justin Batello hits the track now and uh, is looking to improve yesterday? Disappointing time for the driver for Outrun Esports. Uh, he he's looking to put a good one down. And look at this, a little bit of cloud cover. Oh yeah, that's always a welcome sight. You love you as a driver. You love to see it as a competitor. You hate to see it for that guy unless you know that things are going to stick around for the next when you go. So uh, cloud cover can make a big difference. We're not seeing it immediately in the track temp. 139 degrees from the highest we've seen in any of these qualifying sessions. Still, that's a that's just a scorching racetrack right now. Barely you know, Justin 15 right there. <laughs> Yeah, he did, and, and he was one that surprised me yesterday. Um, I, I really was expecting more out of Justin. He does have a cloud there, it looks like, in three and four, but the track temp is still hot. He was 64th with a 43.145. Oh, and he's lost it. It's Missed the cone, two. though. 42.9. 42 42 nine. So there is a pickup there for him, but you know, I, I would agree with you, Parker, that this is a driver that I would say is someone that had some speed to pick up. And he's probably going to owe his friends 20 bucks for missing that cone. <laughs> yeah, we won't charge him extra for that. Parker, are we drinking out of a mug there that I saw? Is that a yes, mug? Yes, this is a Valvoline mug. They gave this to me. Oh. Uh, yes, actually. Very cool. Very cool. Very nice of them. It's a very nice mug. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's very fancy. It's got a, a finish here, a matte finish. Um, and it also... Nice. Yeah, no, it's got the Valvian thing, and it's also got a top for when you have coffee. You can do hot or cold in this mug. It's very impressive. Wow. How do I get my hands on one of those? <laughs> I'll have to find out, to be honest. I don't know if they're selling them, but we, they really should. These are beautiful mugs, so we're going to have to find a way to do it. I'll, uh, Parker, I'll, see, I got... I, I'll see as a Burton Klingon Esports driver that you are, I maybe know a guy or two that can uh, hook you up with one of these mugs. Parker, we're, we're 17 cars into this thing. Um... I'm getting more messages here. This one from Mitch Rolo, who's sitting 25th. Uh oh. He told me the track is definitely slow, so you might be right here. Tell uh, me. He said he said he was running seven eight seven nines earlier in practice, uh, she privately. So, well, she'll. Well, we got He's gonna owe me a uh, a white claw here pretty soon at the end of this thing. <laughs> Wait, we never really established the 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 entire right. waiver though. Now, did we? I'm gonna say that. All right, the waiver is one. What are we going to say? An 8 5. What did uh, what do we feel like? So Dale Jr. was the last time to the last person to stand on his time, right? Landon? Um it was Dale Jr. was 30th and then there there was uh, Matt Everhart 
was 38. And Matt Everhart ran what? 863. 863. I'm going to say it's going to take. Oh, oh no! no! Mac McCachron, no! No! The Pontiac, oh, Pontiac kid. kid. Oh, and that's uh. a heartbreaker. Oh, no, he was snooping in the garages to we were having fun on Twitter earlier about uh, how he found speed and uh, gosh, he found the wall there out of four. That's just ah, it's such a bummer. When we love the Pontiac kid. He's got all of our event sponsors on the car as he tags the wall there in front the hood blue me on the quarter panels. Aaron, you know, the only thing that might feel a, a little bit better for Aaron at least is that he had um, he had nothing to lose so he was 68 yesterday he had to go faster so you know he hopefully he can sleep at night knowing that he went for broke he had to I, go for it and I always you know lean that way David you know in terms of I'd rather I'd rather go down in a ball of flames giving it my all than uh, then find myself you know think it's sitting there watching myself fall out of the race. I just say, why not put it all on the line? Go for it. Give it everything you got. And then, you know, you had, you know, you held your destiny in your own hands and not left it. In right. Someone else's. right. Yeah. He was in that position where you, you have to make the lap. You can't sit on that yeah. time. You knew there was no way that was going to work. So it was, it was go for broke there. And here's a story from last night, Colin Keister racing on a, a, a sim that was not his own, a sim rig that was not his own. Had uh, trouble getting up through the gears. A whole lot of issues yesterday. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of stories around that and, and him getting that bad lap time in. Uh, seems to have gotten it well adjusted here tonight, up through the gears and is going. Uh, but that was a big storyline yesterday of uh, that eNASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series driver and winner this year at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Uh, not getting a good lap in. We'll see what he can do here. I'm, uh, I'm watching this, you know, Closely, I'm monitoring this lap very, very closely. This would be because, a big benchmark. Yeah, he had he did an excellent job in his prelim. Oh, but the track temp hits 140 degrees, highest we have seen yet. 214 miles an hour into turn one, but it's all about the corners here today. Can he hold that speed? Oh wow, this is actually pretty quick. 203. He was actually holding 205 longer than I thought he would through one and two lane, and this this could be a stellar lap time. Oh, this will really set the benchmark as we see 215 216 just for a moment lets it drift up a little bit can he get it back to the bottom that's a clean lap right there that no uh no no rear end moving around out of the corner how's he navigate here down below this the yellow line for that start finish line an 8 0 wow 808 i called a 78 i was uh missed it by a little bit <laughs> So That's the fastest that we've seen here in this uh, in this round of qualifying, the fastest time in 8:08 uh, for uh, for Colin Keister right there. So David, um, that's a tie with yeah. Tony Ball uh, yeah, right now, and so that puts Ball would win the tiebreaker because Ball stood on a time from the first session. So uh, right. because Keister re-ran, um, he he loses out on that tiebreaker. Uh, that's a big, uh, big lap right there for Keister. Big lap. Huge lap. And uh, unlike last night, he's not quite at 808 heartbreak. That's uh, kind of West. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get that in one more time. So uh, uh, earlier, yeah, I, I had you throw mentioned... a Kanye West album into a, into a qualifying show at Daytona. You got to try. <laughs> I, I had mentioned earlier that um, talking about drivers, you know, whether or not they – uh, changing their setups. You know, Tom um, Abramidis messaged me and he said he's sticking with it. So I don't know what whether he was using what track. I don't know how he got the track temp up to 140 because uh, we got some hot track temps right now. But uh, Tom, Abram Tom Abramidis is not changing his setup tonight. All right. Yeah, hey, I got to have faith in it. Have faith in that setup. You built it for a reason. You ran it yesterday for a reason. So, you know, if you felt comfortable enough and confident enough yesterday to run it, why not again today? Yep. All right, chilled house. I gotta, uh, yeah. I gotta interrupt for a second. So I'm getting uh, some chat here in the Facebook Eraser GG Facebook. Uh, that this is also being streamed on in that chat there. I've been chatting with them and I said, hey, what should I call the cutoff time for our bet, right? Um, and it has been decided a 42.860. 
So Dave Sanders says 42860. That's what we're going to call the, right. the cutoff. And David, do you, we got some breaking news coming in right now. Of a, uh, We got a, a pretty high-profile driver with some issues. Oh. No, t- two issues in two nights, it would seem, for our dear friend. Uh, these are the things you hate to see. Um, but uh, one of the inherent problems of uh, of sim racing, I guess you could say, for Garrett Smithley, who uh, has just tweeted out he's having internet problems uh, from the home office, and uh, he's trying to get things squared away. But, boy, that's a helpless feeling right there. That's unfortunate. He caught the wall out of four yesterday and now battling internet issues tonight. Yeah, that's, that's, that's rough. Yeah, so what, what we do uh, with eRacer, we put him on a five-minute clock. Um, that's why we would roll the next car. Um, we should continue to roll cars as long as the next cars are yet to go. And then once five minutes is up, um, if Garrett is here, uh, then he, he can go. But he's got about five seconds. I don't think he's going to make it. Unfortunate. And that's it. Unfortunately, the clock is off for Garrett. You know, get. I want to say that Garrett was uh, Garrett's in Pennsylvania right now. Um, he took his his simulator with him, his computer and his steering wheel and everything. Uh, he went to Pocono to do a sponsor appearance. So uh, he really tried to make it happen. Real bummer there for Garrett. He was he was set to drive the number fifty three radius machine. Yeah, that's a heartbreaker. That is- that's that's unfortunate. Terrible. Radio Bob not going to be happy. Obviously, nobody happy about that. And uh, but I mean, it's not like he's out of everything. He'll, he'll be in the Firecracker 200, but he won't be running in the 400, unfortunately. Good time to bring up that the Firecracker 200 also is a pretty high paying race uh, in the grand scheme of iRacing races. It pays $500 to win. Will pay right. exactly your entry fee to start, uh, and then a variable all the way. It builds all the way through the uh, through the finishing order. So. It's still a really high pain race. Oh, and Garrett just joined the server. Oh, I mean, yeah. he missed oh it by gosh. seconds. Ah, oh. uh, that's oh. a real bummer, Garrett. I wish, I wish. We look at Jill Chatelaine here. The feel-good story from the prelims last week. Got in on the uh, on the last transfer spot in his race. We talked to him afterwards. Uh, joining us all the way from Switzerland, a very dedicated sim racer to be here, uh, given what time it is over there, uh, very early morning hours. But uh, Jill working his way through three and four. Good speed in that Perrier car right there. I, I, I think he's got a good little lap going here. I'm glad you said it. I wanted to ask you, can I try? Can I try to say it? Try it one more Go time. For it. The Uh-oh. Jill in the Perrier oh, no. car. He's sideways. Don't hit anything. Hold the brake. 4995. Get that, that is right in a... now. It's in right now. I don't know if that's gonna be good enough. Hmm. Oh Jill. Okay, I mean, Parker, we need to finish this thing off. Yeah. We, well you're saying an eight six oh is gonna be the cutoff? To get into yeah. the firecracker 400. That's what they were saying in the chat. I'm gonna go a little lower than that. I'm gonna say uh, 858. Uh, you know, so it's more exactly in that mid eight. Uh, right. So it'd be more fair to you. So loser has to buy the other some uh, a uh, a uh, white claw pack. All right, all right, all right. that's fair. That's fair. What what's Yo. a pack of white claw go for these days? I'm not really. I don't know. I never looked. All I know is it's golden. <laughs> it's just liquid gold. So you Park, know, it be I thought you were gonna say more. you don't know because Parker, because you don't have to buy it. You just broke Aaron Smith's heart because he ran an eight seven. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, I don't man. know. So he's sitting thirty fifth right now. I, I think he just made him a little more bit more nervous. And uh, I also want to point out Tony Ball is in the chat right now. Tony's sitting twenty first. He feels like these guys are are killing themselves by taking the apron wrong in the trial. I don't know what that means by wrong. And for Tony, I don't know if he's super incentivized to tell us specifically, but it'd be interesting to keep an eye on the Twitch chat right now to see what taking the apron wrong really means. I think I know what he's talking about. I I think they're taking the wrong angle and they're actually scrubbing speed by coming back up onto the track before they cross the time. You want to point the car to the bottom so you're crossing the line on the flat without turning the wheel at all. And that's... I think that's what he's talking about. So they're cutting down too late. They're cutting across the the yeah, they're too transit. They're too. Oh, 141 on the track temp, by the way, guys. Yeah. Just the highest we've ever seen here. Jake Poulon here, the Papyrus car. I love that car. It's awesome. 
Yeah, uh, Jake, of course, is uh, actually he's one of the devs for iRacing. Um, and, and he was one of the drivers I was talking to today about the gains that they had made on their setup. He said they had found about a half a tenth in their setup. Uh, he ran a, a decent time yesterday, uh, 42.86 yesterday. So by that, he might be able to hit an 855 tonight if he can do what he said that that setup can do across the line. He went exactly the same. 861, actually a thousand slower a than thousand what he slower. And just George just barely scraped the wall on the exit of the trial there as he got the checkered flag uh, on his lap. So it doesn't look like he'll have to go to a backup, but that's going to be tight. I said it's an 858. Eight. Yep. He did an 861. That is going to be very close to the cutoff of the Firecracker 400, in my opinion. I mean, that, that thousandth could mean the world um, to Jake here two hours from now. But at the very least, I don't think he's going to feel horrible about that. I mean, what what's, what else could you have done, right? You could have stood on your time, gained a thousandth. As long as a thousandth doesn't cost him uh, that one spot. All right. Yeah. As long as it doesn't cost you, then it's okay. But if it costs you, it's the worst decision you've ever made. You're punching uh, your pillow and, and uh, you know, you're, you're inconsolable at that point. Yeah. But yep. Hey, we're getting like, a lot like of like feedback in the chat. We're getting a lot of comments in the chat. We got a lot of Garrett Smithley fans in the chat. Would love seeing it. We got a lot of lean stream in the chat right now. Let's get the lean stream going. Um, we we this is a this is a tough a, a tough conversation for us. Oh, is Brett Bumkari? Uh -oh. oh no! Keep it out of the oh, fence wall. Princess Peach. A lot of no. damage for Brett. Can't save the princess there. Ah. Uh. Brett wants to abort the lap. That's the first uh, full-on crash we've seen. We've had one uh, one driver pull the ejecto seat uh, before he hit the wall, but right there for Brett Pankari, just lost control of it and mm, up into the wall. Oh, that's a bummer for Brett. And he's I think his car's got too much damage. He's electing to just bring it to pit road. That's a heartbreaker right there. You get all set to go, and then you can't even get the lap down. Um, it looked like one of those. Uh, we've we've seen a few of those, Parker. One of those super high entries, uh, trying to pull the car to the bottom from the wall, and it just every time we've seen somebody try and do that, it hasn't worked. And today, with the hottest track temp ter uh, temperatures that we've seen, it, you're not going to get away with that today either. 141. I mean, we haven't seen that this entire uh, two days of qualifying. We got a big one coming out here, though. Blake Reynolds. This, this is a Parker, big, what do you think? E NASCAR driver uh, for Team Dillon East or Team Dillon uh, Racing, and and oh, I don't I don't know. This is uh, I think this is a Colin Keister situation. He's gonna he's gonna slot himself in. I don't think it'll be anything you know massively better uh, than we see. He's coming from fiftieth. Really, yeah, well, I'd say I I think he'll slot himself in. But what I'm saying by massively better is I don't think. This is one of those lap times where just because he's a NASCAR driver, he's going to go out there and find a way to be, you know, top of this board. It's just not going to happen right now. I think this is going to be a situation like we've seen where he's going to, if he goes faster, he's nailing this lap better than he did yesterday because something went wrong in yesterday's lap. Oh, well, he blamed yesterday. the wind. This was one of the wind guys yesterday who. Uh, oh, we had a wind guy. He was done. Yeah, he was oh, a wind guy yesterday. All the wind's fault. 42904. Well, fortunately for him, the wind is non existent compared to yesterday. And now he can blame the track temp. He's got issues <laughs> with this one. <laughs> oh. Team work down the back straightaway here. 215 right there. Yeah, just clicked over to 215 for an instant before he got into turn three. Nice tidy line there. Not as clean as uh, as Keister's was, though, I don't think. But we'll see what he does more. here as he approaches. Finish off this lap. What's it going to be for Reynolds? That's a, that's a, oh boy, look at that. <laughs> that's going to be your bubble, Parker. That's an 85 with a four. I told you, I told you. Wasn't going to be way better. It was just enough to be in there, in the conversation. So, um, yeah, that's going to be tight. That's going to be really, really, really tight. We got another big hmm. one coming up here. Mitchell Hunt. Who, you know, he's coming from 48th, and this is one that has speed. You know, I, I, I'm i starting to realize how many cars outside the top 43 are heavy hitters. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, guess there's a, a lot of heavy hitters. 
We had quite a few of them. This is two uh, two HPM cars back to back. Hunt and then Nick Morse will be next in line. Nick's been very very active on Twitter today, uh, almost live tweeting this event as we've been going along. It's been fun to watch using the hashtag Firecracker 400. But uh, we saw a, a great run out of one of the HPM cars yesterday. These two not quite the lap they were looking for. We'll see if they can do better here. Hunt will have first crack at it. And we can see the bubble is now for the first time under 43 seconds. So we're starting to see that field tighten up. Really tighten up. See a speed into one. <clears throat> Do we feel up to 15 into one? 15 into turn one. Let wow. Huge. Heaved it. Oh. Tidy, tidy. Oh, yeah, we haven't seen 215 into one. We have not seen that. That could mean 216, 217 down the backstretch. Let's see here. Or did he just have a ton of speed? Was the wind in his favor? He did hit 216. Can he this keep it on the bottom? It is down there. It looks it's solid. Clean. Down to, down to it's 03. Clean. Eight five. Oh, that would be faster. So that tells me this high track temp, they're just sliding so much through the corners. They're losing so much speed through there. Wow. I really thought that would have been faster than that. I mean, 216 into turn one and or 216 in the back stretch, 215 to turn one. I mean, that was just crazy speeds we have not seen yep. before. Uh, but obviously he was giving up a ton through the corners, just sliding and, and you know, getting rid of that speed but hey i mean here's another one that came from 48th and put himself 31st right now so um uh, you know Great that's game. not that can't make uh, you know blake reynolds feel very good um it's still got to make dale jr feel nervous josh parker i mean other drivers uh lizenby who's who's held on their time on his time justin lizenby i know this track is slower parker but it's going to be tight, but I, 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 I keep, you know, I fall the back. The ambient temperature opinion. went up another degree to 92. Oh, well, yeah. the ambient's 92. The track is 141. Humidity is 61 right now. You know, Parker, you talked a lot earlier today when we were texting that you felt like the humidity would be a, a big factor. Yeah, I think that is the... Uh... It's one of the things that was said to me from a lot of drivers. They felt like the humidity was a big factor uh, here, you know, in terms of speed, just sapping that horsepower uh, if it's too high. And so therefore, if it's a little lower, it might allow more horsepower, but then you get the slick track. And so it's, I think it's always a trade off, you know, amongst all these different variables, track usage, track temp, ambient temp, you know, humidity. That's why it's all there because it all makes, you know, a difference in real life. And iRacing does an incredible job of simulating that in this simulation. Well, this is our guy, Nick Morse. Does. does he have enough? 87. 87. He's right. got to be happy with that. Definitely pickups for both of the HPM cars that uh, that didn't quite get the lap they were looking for yesterday. Um, they were going I mean, off came from a 91. Cut line. Yeah. That's a, that's a pickup. If we're looking at our hypothetical cut line, that puts him below it, though. I mean, that's going to give Alex Kalinix a big sigh of relief to see someone just line up, slot in right behind him. Only 2,000 slower. And Joshua it does knock Chin out Justin up. Botello. I'll put uh, Dylan Thomas on the uh, cut line there in 43rd now. All right, now this is a big one. Joshua Chin yesterday was 32nd at an 8.52. That's per Parker's recommendation. That might have been good enough to make the field at the end of the day today. So Joshua is essentially uh, maybe just looking to back up his time. You know, maybe maybe hoping for like a full hundredth. If he goes from an 8.52 to an 8.42, that's at least worth, um, you know, a few spots. So this one ought to be interesting. This will be another good benchmark. I just got really hungry when I saw Nutella, but... I'm, I'm kind of guys. I've got a little grumbly we, in my tumbly as well. Did, did we all skip <laughs> dinner tonight? Ah, uh, yes. 
I had uh, the oh, glazed man. potato chips. Those were tremendous. They were very fun. Oh. Oh. What flavor were they? Regular flavor? Or? Just regular. Yeah. That's all I could oh. muster. Yep. Real exciting stuff. But what's so, more exciting white is Josh. Light <laughs> oh, brother. Well, Joshua Chin, can, let's see what kind of speed he has down the backstretch in that new Nutella machine. Yeah, that is a good looking car. 217. Oh, wow. Wow. I I don't Dude. know. Where, how can you tell me this track is slower? That is crazy. That's a great we, I, run I, down the backstretch. Did it all yesterday? Never. That's the first oh, good time lap. Eight, eight three eight wow so that's it i mean that's very that's, that's strong lap the king of chins good lap right there so that leapfrogs junior that leapfrogs josh parker that leapfrogs justin lisenby yep so he's looking pretty smart for rerunning <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's absolutely. What that means. <laughs> 142 track temp. It's just getting hotter and hotter out here, boys. Where, but where is this these guys going fast. He's coming from? It's the lack of wind, I gotta think. It's only two to three mile per hour right now out of the west. It's, uh, you know, it's just not a lot. It's a big difference from yesterday. You know, you had, I think it, what was it, all the way up to seven mile per hour gusts yesterday, eight, eight or nine, um, and you know, a real average around six. And here we're averaging around two to three. Right. So it's allowing these drivers so much more speed. Look at that cool Elliott Sadler Esports car. I, I love that look. That's good looking car. For Gary Sexton there, that knocked out Dylan Thomas. That puts Jill Chatelaine on the cut line. Now we'll see what uh, Dirty Airs he's known here on Twitch. Gary Sexton, we'll see what he can do. Uh, and that that's a sharp looking car. I mean, there's another 215 into turn one. Yeah, he's scooting. I mean, I, I can't help but to think if if you're 215 into one, 216, 17 into three, then you're that you're gonna be in the low 80s. Well, but we saw it with uh, what Blake Reynolds. He had a ton of straightaway speed at you know as he entered the corners, but didn't quite have the speed through the corner. So. And uh, I think, you know, it's, I, I don't know. I think it's the combination. You need the whole package. Yeah, and yep. that's down to 202 on the exit of four for Gary. Maybe a little too much sliding. Yeah, it was sliding a lot. Eight, still eight, an eight. Yeah, still a, a high eight, but a lot of sliding in three and four. Uh, straightaway speed is one thing, guys, but when, you, when, when you're when you tugging on that steering wheel, you're scrubbing speed at that point. And that's, right. uh, that, that, that's really... That's going to make or break your lap right there, as you see the demonstration from Parker. <laughs> Hands on top. There you go. There you hey, go. Hey, exactly. doing this? Not fast. You want to do this? I That's Actually, fast. you know what? I don't want to. That's fast. Not let's fast. not um, Let's not underrate what just happened there. Um, Gary was 34th with an 8.54 yesterday. So he went slower. So he went slower, and not, not just by a little bit. Uh, a by a couple hundreds, a lot of it. I mean, in in the world of this type of qualifying, yeah, that's a new word. A lot of it. A lot of it. Thing. Hashtag love, like Logan. It's a sharp looking car. I love the chrome, uh, chrome spoiler, chrome wheels. How did you get a chrome spoiler through inspection, Parker? I don't. How did Josh not catch that? I, I meant to ask last night on on Kane Cook's car. I don't know we were allowing carbon fiber hoods and deck lids. These, you know, these racers, they get innovative. They get the them engineers right. in there and you know tweaking around. They're always trying to get around our rules. Always trying to find ways to tweak on these virtual race cars. The zeros and ones back in the garage are finding ways to you know code something different. But uh, you know what? I think it's all in good fun, and uh, I don't. Think you know I'm not I'm no rocket scientist, but I don't think that's worth a lot of speed having that chrome spoiler. You know, as much as Junior is texting us right now, Parker, he ought to just come on the show. He really should. He's, I mean, he's he's Junior calling me a downer. Doesn't like my tone. Oh no! <laughs> is he blowing he, your phone up? He's saying you're you're uh, you're you're. 
You're telling him he's not going to make it. I'm saying he's going to make it. I mean, he's invested in this, and you're just putting him down this whole time. <laughs> I, I, I will tell you, I, I, I like – um, I like how he's kind of dialed this in for himself because this is exactly how, you know, as, as racers, how we do it in real life. Um, I've been I've been through this where you had to make shows. You know, Dale knew exactly who he had beating him to make this race, and he had Reynolds beating him. He had Chin beating him, Morse. These are all drivers that, um, that you know, I, I think that uh, some of them he's, he's gained. So, um for Dale, those might be freebies. Maybe he's feeling a little more confident. I mean, if he wants to come in and, and watch and chew off his his uh, you know fingernails with us, he's more than welcome to. But I I, I think he's okay. I think he's really going to be fine. Some of these I'm others, uh... you know, don't know. <laughs> that's why we watch, right? That's I mean, that's that's why we're doing this. If 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 we knew. Uh, then we wouldn't be watching, you know. If we oh, if we knew what was going to happen, we wouldn't make a big deal of it. And we have, we have going on here. here. We have something special, Landon. I'm uh, I'm allowing this. It doesn't count. It's the end of this portion of the session, but we're gonna let this four commercial this break. Five minute clock, and instead of a commercial break, we're gonna let this car here, driven by Garrett Smith, and because he brought his entire computer system to Pennsylvania, he's in the Radius Bounty Car. He's not gonna make the Firecracker 400. But why not give him the chance to put a little bit of love to Radius and make a symbolic qualifying lap that absolutely means nothing. We shouldn't even time this, but uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to let this happen. It's a thank you to Radius. What a beautiful car. We're, we're going to get somebody in the 53 race. Somebody's got to drive that 53 Radius in the show next we Wednesday. Do. So if, you, if you're fast enough to make it in, send me a message and we'll get you a sponsored car. <laughs> We've got a Look couple on offer. Anyone that and, and really say that to all the uh, to all the, the guys who make the firecracker for it. If you feel like you want a sponsor, give us a message. We're always absolutely uh, we have many on offer. We'll help you get on a car. You know, Garrett, we got to give a lot of props to to Garrett Bear. Took all of his computer stuff with him to to Pennsylvania. He's got a sponsor appearance today. He was dedicated. We can't. He's very dedicated. Very dedicated, and you know what? Here at Eraser, we love to see that. We like people who get really invested in our events, like Garrett Smithley, Dale Jr., and all the NASCAR Pro Series drivers, all the drivers from around iRacing. Everyone gets very invested in it. We love to see that. And so, hey, you know, every, we might be pretty, uh, pretty, you know, intense promoters and uh, race officials, but sometimes we like to have a little fun. That's what we're doing. Here. That's right. You know, maybe we need to find a better policy for for determining. Um, you know, internet dropouts and whatnot. Yeah, this might change the future of eraser rules forever. Garrett, what do you got? Forty-two nine one seven. Well, it wouldn't have been good enough anyway. Hey, put on a show for us, buddy. <laughs> Keep her in one did. piece. That he did. Good job, Garrett. Thanks for showing up, bud. You can see him. Uh, most likely we'll see how it all shakes out, but uh, let's see if he, you know, can find himself in the 200, maybe. Possibly. Possibly. Well, yeah. we, uh, we got to figure out know, the alternates and everyone that runs and there's a lot, there's a lot of things that happen there. So, sorry, sorry. I, I think my discord disconnected there. We, we have the firecracker 200 Parker, which is um, a 43 car starting field. Uh, for the drivers that missed the cut. So the starting lineup, the pole sitter, will be the 44th place driver, which right now is Gilles Chatelaine. Um, you know, hopefully we can see Garrett Smithley in that field. It'll be it'll be a good show. That's going to be on Monday, June 29th. And that's, like you said, Parker, that one that one pays pretty well. It pays 500 bucks to win. It does. Pays you, be, pays you your money back just to start it. So... You know, this, uh, with this event, we started with 344 entries. I know you've heard us say that number a lot. 88 made it here in the two-round qualifying, 43 races in the Firecracker 200, 43 races in the Firecracker 400, which is going to pay $2,000 to win. Uh, but every spot pays you something. So it's, it pays $100 from a $25 entry fee just to start the Firecracker 400. I think that's pretty cool. I'd sign up for that any day of the week in any type of racing, and especially in the racing when I was coming up where you used to pay a lot more than you ever got back. I think uh, <laughs> it's a cool setup. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm no accountant, but 
Oh wait, yes, I am. Yes, That's a are, good deal. That's a good deal. Uh, well, you know what? We got a little break in the action while we get the track prep for uh, for more drivers to go out and put down laps. So, uh, for those who may have missed it the first time, uh, we got another video for you. Check it out. Pretty cool stuff. Ah, I love it. I love it. I love it. So I, well done. I gotta tell you, I, I wanna I wanna close uh the loop on this Garrett thing. Um of all people to get a, a protest from, um I think the the sponsor is telling me that they think the clock was a bit fast on Garrett by maybe just a second. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't even have computers, we, we got sponsors coming. Uh, yeah, we, we, I have like, radius no, bob. Real. Radius Bob is is uh is pulling up the shot clock, and and is gonna overlay it with the buzzer, but we're gonna have to talk about that one. <laughs> boy, oh boy, this is this is how you know it's serious, boys. When you got the sponsors coming after you, not just the drivers. That's that's how you know. <laughs> yeah, this is this is too much. We're gonna you know what we're start doing is just giving them your number. That's I, I think that's the solution here. I mean, they're not going to like the answer that I give them. It's not going to be any different than yours. That's true. That's true. <laughs> you know, it's. Uh, I can just deflect them for a little bit till they figure oh, out. That's fine. Number. That's fine. Yeah. I'll I'll yeah. bring them on. Bring them on. I'll take it. It's fine. Not a problem. I'm used to putting out fires like that. We're all good. You know, just uh, send them my way. We'll come to a, a nice understanding of why they're wrong and and you're right. And uh, I'm I'm happy to facilitate that conversation. Absolutely, uh, not a <laughs> problem shoulders, at all. Right? Might, uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, listen, we got to be consistent in the message, right? And then that's what we're gonna do. No matter who the sponsor is, and we love all the sponsors, and we want to thank them for being a part of this because it wouldn't happen without them. People getting real sponsors to come in and run this event, guys. I mean, it. it that's right. Pe people looking at this, it's still sim racing at the end of the day, but. It's more than just sim racing. It's it's yep. a whole lot more than just sim racing, in my opinion, yep. and I think we all feel the same way. Well, you hopefully know, this is the start of something great. You know, I've, obviously in the support from Infra Resolutions, uh, you know, it, it's been tremendous to be able to put up this kind of purse and and have this kind of a show. So hopefully we keep it rolling, Parker. For resolutions, you can definitely, I know your chat there on Twitch is always sending them to Infra Resolutions. You got that uh, great... Um, uh, what do you bot call command? it? Bot command? What do you call it? Yeah, bot command? Bot command. Exclamation point about. discount. Yes, discount, and then you get a great discount on all their products. But, um, you know, it's really cool to see these sponsors. And I've seen some people out there talk about, like, hey, what does it mean to have a sponsor in eSports or eMotorsports? Like, why why have it? And you know what it does? It does a couple things. One, yeah, it doesn't cost us anything to run these, you know, virtual race cars. But it does validate the time and effort that these racers and all these people participate in these events put into it so and it validates all of you viewers out there watching this and being interested in getting into what's going on so i think that's you know one of the key things and then lastly and maybe most selfishly having these corporate partners come in actually helps us spread the word that this is going on that people should be watching this that they should be paying it you know attention and that's what iRacing does so well and it, they give us this platform to do that so I think uh, you know when people wonder why do you have these sponsors? Why are they getting? It? Is it just for fun? No, it's 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 real business, but it also does so many things to validate this the you know platform and what we're doing here and put, we, that we all put so much effort into. Well, I and and Parker, I look at the iRacing platform as this new and I hate calling it new because it's been around so long, but a new portal for real racing. This is just another discipline 
for real motorsports. So Tom Abramidis said he wasn't changing his setup. Oh, had some confidence. The tracks cooled down just a little bit. 136, still pretty hot. Track temperatures even hotter than where we started. But, you know, maybe we've kind of peaked the sun in the sky. Tracks cooling down just a little bit for Tom. Uh, this is four degrees, five degrees cooler than what we saw uh, by the last car before. So before this, we had that little break. So this could be interesting. We'll see if this little, adds some speed. A little bit windier, though. Mm. Winds have picked up this problem. afternoon in Daytona. It is seven miles an hour. Winds coming out of the west. We were kind of in the three mile an hour range earlier. I wonder if that will affect this end of the straightaway speed. Oh, definitely. He's only about 212 going into turn one right Just there. Just clipped 213. Yeah, that's we're a little bit later in the day. You know, time's passing here, and it's uh, about quarter to two in Daytona Beach right now as we're doing this on uh, on June 25th. So it's today, uh, about a quarter to two uh, right now. So uh, interesting to note that and how that affects Tom uh, as he makes his lap here a little bit higher up the track. In that middle groove in three and four pulls it back down to the bottom to get the run off the corner. See what this lap time looks like. An 88. 880. That's going to be... See what Tom ran a 43.17 yesterday. So we got, what, maybe 28 cars left here, Parker? 27, 28 cars? Well, we got a very interested bystander that's begging to know how many cars are left, so you better get that number <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, once again, we're just going to continue to remind you all that Dale has been blowing our phones up. <laughs> Doesn't... <laughs> I think he's too nervous to talk. Yep. <laughs> he's pacing around right now. In just pacing around, pointing out, <laughs> pointing out that Tom just made a huge pickup on his speed from 66 to 43.17. Mm. To be clear, we do have 20 cars uh, scheduled to run here. 20 cars left uh, on the roster, left to put a lap down. 20 left. getting this is getting tight it's, i mean who I, who is ner i mean if you're blake reynolds how do you feel right now nervous i would say there that that to me I mean, that's your spot right, yeah because he was right above my cutoff so of course i would feel nervous there because i you know have timed this and guessed this perfectly uh of course as you'd expect uh to where this is gonna be an 858 is gonna be the cutoff if you don't run anything better than 858, you're not going to be in the Firecracker 400. If you run slower than 858, 42858, you will be in the Firecracker uh, 200. Well, let's find out. I mean, we just, uh, I just asked, if you're Blake, at Blake Reynolds, how do you feel right now? Blake? Uh, I'm a little nervous. I'm just right there right there and uh i'm just i wasn't happy with my weather i wasn't happy with my wind and i know that's an excuse but uh yeah i just uh luck didn't go my way i just i hit my lap when i felt right and it just the time didn't whoa show. look at that the first seven we've seen today garrett conrath and that nine, was nine. 42799 where did he come from with that well, wow. a doozy. <laughs> so that's gonna, that might be some new, a new topic for discussion. And I'm trying to see Garrett was 47th. I mean, that launched himself into the show. Blake, is that kind of, is that what you're talking about right there in terms of just the different track conditions? Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just really like when you see your lap time, you're like, huh, I, uh, but that doesn't seem right every every time. Like, it seems with everybody. But uh, yeah, I I have about eight to nine guys that on my list that I think would beat me, and Garrett was one of them, and then I think Eddie okay. will be here too. Yeah, Eddie LCQC champion, ten thousand uh, dollars. We were we felt like he was had some pretty big kahunas to give up his twenty fourth place spot. I mean, did, was that really necessary? Uh, I'm not sure. I really like. I didn't see the weather until I got home. I was working. I know it got released at like 1 p.m. Eastern time or something like that. But uh, yeah, I just I got home and I just 
I instantly, after last night, just put rerun, just because my lap was terrible yesterday. Yep. Well, Blake. And you, well, Ho Landon, before we let you go, go you uh, you mentioned a list, Blake. So right now, what do you need to go your way for that list to work out? How many do you, you have some that have beat you that you didn't suspect? Or if you have some that, are you feeling pretty like, all right, I'm, I'm on plan with my list? Uh, there's a couple that beat me that I'm a little impressed by their lap, but I have just looking down the running order for this session, uh, there's a, there's about seven to eight more that I think could, you know, with their setup and I know their speed from previous practices, uh, sessions like that. I think they could easily beat me, but uh, you never know. Someone could hit that perfect lap. There oh it is. Boy, there's an 805. A low eight. That's two Which fast is, times already. Yeah, that is a pickup from yesterday for him. So it definitely a net gain. So. Well, thank you, Blake, for joining us. Good luck. Hopefully, hopefully luck goes your way at least once. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Blake. It. I got one more driver I want to talk to here because I want to I want to catch him before he goes out. And that is the organizer of the fake 500, Zane Scott, who had a phenomenal prelim race. Zane, you're you're really the first driver that we've pulled in and talked to before your lap. So what is going through your mind now that you've seen you know 40 of these drivers go through ah i feel good uh actually um i just had in discord last or it might have been this morning i don't know i haven't slept in about 48 hours so uh i feel good we're gonna we're gonna tim richmond it we're gonna party a little bit here right now get nice and loose and then uh if we're if we're gonna go out, we're gonna go out in a blaze of glory here. So I feel good. I feel like we can run a really low eight, maybe a seven, if I can run that perfect lap. So we'll see. And that's exciting. What what's the execution? What is it gonna what is the most important thing for you to get right? Uh, you got to keep the car underneath you. I think that's probably the biggest issue. Yesterday, I, I ran a little bit of a tighter set because I was worried that I was going to be too loose and it ended up costing me uh, some time. We ran like an 8.7. We ran uh, some 42.65s in some private testing. So we knew the set was good. It was going to come down to the driver executing. And yesterday, we didn't execute. Um, so I went back to the drawing board, took that setup, the looser setup, tightened it up just a little bit and was able to maintain the speed in it. So I feel pretty good uh, about what we have coming up here in a little bit. Well, Zane, good luck. Stay focused. Get it right. Thank you. You know what that reminded me of? What's that, Parker? Oh, let's see if Shane runs here. Shane Iliff. Not good. 43-3. 43-3. That's not good enough. Shane was so good <laughs> in the prelims in fixed setup, but he is one who has admitted he just doesn't know Didn't get it setup, dialed making in. it well, engineering that well, and... You know, we had an interesting go thing going on over the last couple of days, which is the uh, was the idea of, um, you know, a setup marketplace in some respects. People trying to make technical God. alliances, trying to buy setups for each other. That's we did some cash offers for setups. What? Oh yeah, what tons of them. <laughs> yeah, and as true promoters, you know, we try to dip ourselves in there and say, hey, look, we're taking ten percent of every one of these. That's right. right. Uh, but no, I think. I think that's been really interesting. Well, I took 10% of a couple deals, didn't you? Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me? Are we, <laughs> well, yeah. Are we double dipping I, I think we talked about that. David, David, we're going to have to uh, we're gonna have to chat. <laughs> okay, yeah, cut us off the camera. Came out of it. Yep. Yep. I, I, I won't. I, you don't want to know the deals that I was working, so I'll just stay out of it. Track tip is a little steady here. It's still 137. It's still cooler than it was earlier. Will Weber... Uh, he's coming from 74th, so he was 43.29. This is pretty much an all or nothing for him. Uh, mm -hmm. Shane Iliff has someone in the Facebook chat named Patrick Porter who says, I want to sponsor Shane Iliff. How do I get in contact with him? So you never know. Shane might have an opportunity here to have a sponsor for the uh, Firecracker 200. Yeah, there you go. Let's get him. Let's get it. something on his car. All right, Will Weber down the back straightaway into three to 15 right there. Man, I, I can't believe the lap that that, uh, that Garrett Conrath put up hitting that uh, high seven. That's fastest we've seen today. 
Some big names in this uh, in this field still left to run and hit a lap. Weber really walked it up the track there. That's that's not going to be a good lap time at all. That's definitely an improvement from yesterday for for Will. Yes. Couple couple tenths, but not gonna not gonna get him on the board. No, now to leave uh, the brightest car in the world, John Gorlinski, to be uh, the next car out on track. So we'll see what John can do. Uh, we know he was absolutely not happy with the lap that he put down yesterday, hence why he's running today, but uh, not up to the standard that uh, that he was going to hold himself to. We'll see what he can do today. David, he was 25th yesterday. <laughs> I know. That's an 18-car cushion. I mean, he <laughs> ran a 42.833. So I think he I was mean, looking at his fellow uh, his fellow e NASCAR Coca Cola I Racing Series drivers, and that was the standard he was trying to hold himself to. It, it very well could be. Um, he wasn't the only one with a black license that that was outside the top twenty. That's for sure. Nope. But this couple. is this is a risky move. I mean, I, if I were twenty fifth yesterday, I would not have rerun. No, I would have held no. my. No, I would have held for sure. But you know what, Gorlinski's. Uh, Hey, he's he's got that black uh, license. He's in the series. He's been around for a long time, all for a reason. Knows what he's doing, and he has faith. He has confidence. That he's going to go yep. out there and do even better. Uh, so we'll see as he fires off this lap two thirteen down Just to the turn number one. But we've Just kind of clicked. proven that that top speed doesn't necessarily dictate. It's more just how you get through the corner. He was smooth on that wheel. You could see he, he he didn't drop below 203, even though he's a little bit higher up the racetrack. Very smooth operator on that steering wheel. 216 flirted with it. 216. That's pretty good speed at the end of the straightaway. 205, 04. Bouncing around. I love that. That's Leon pretty. That's a good 18. corner right there. This might be in the seventh. This could be fast. There it is. Oh, oh no. Not eight, quite. One eight. It's a good lap, though. It's a very solid lap. I think that. And it's a game for him. Field. Yeah, I yep. think that gets in the field. That was a smart move by John Gorlinski. And I, I can't decide if that scheme is throwback because it's all just one color or yep. futuristic because it's neon yellow. I can't. Yep. Decide. I, I'll, I'll, I'll say from my perspective, it's throwback because that's what he's been known for throughout his entire career uh, in sim racing is that that color. Um, throwback and, and John, they call him. He, yeah, and when you see him now, uh, you know, in the, the E-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing series, his car doesn't look like that, and it throws people off because they're used to seeing him in that bright yellow car. So I'll, I'll call it a throwback for that reason. Well, that, well, there you go. It is. In, my, in that case, it is a throwback. <laughs> David Brown from Peachtree City, Georgia, coming from 33rd on the charts yesterday, 42.853. So, you know, I, I would imagine if you're David, you obviously you didn't give up your lap um, to not go faster. So he's definitely hoping for a little bit more speed. But Parker, are you, you going to be happy if you can back up what you ran yesterday with an 8.53? Well, Parker, I think that's great insight. You know, I mean, yeah. eight five three is. <laughs> yeah, you've been, you definitely <laughs> sticking to your guns there. You've said this entire time that that mid eight is going to be close. So we hey, just got to see here for like, David. I was typing in like the uh, in the Facebook chat over here. It's it's getting lit over here. So. Oh, it's getting uh, lit. He says. Yeah, it's getting lit. As they said, a technical term. Oh, brother. Getting lit, he says. It's uh, it's like what Parker said yesterday. You won't. What, what was it you said yesterday? You won't see it until you see it, right? Until you see it. Yeah, that was. A, I think it's a good looking analysis. It's a good looking lap for David. Uh, oh, wow. and that's a seven nine seven. Wow. Nice wow, lap, that's David Brown. All right, so how many cars do we have left here, Landon? Uh, um. Well, we are <laughs> I at 16. David Brown. I showed sixteen. 16 to go. I show 16 names that have not gotten a time yet that are in the server. If, if you're Dale Jr., you need to bat 500 in these last 16 mm -hmm. cards. Here's a big one right here rolling off. Blake McCandless talked about him quite a few times. Call him Mr. F4 Speed. You know why? They, do you know why they call him Mr. F4 Speed? Go on. 
Well, you know, we talked about his grandfather, Mr. Uh, Mr. Four Speed. Uh, Blake McCandles took that a step further, Mr. F4 Speed, because back in uh, the NASCAR 2003 days, F4 was to look at your tire temps. And he and his brother, Philip, who's uh, uh, overseas in Japan right now, he and his brother, Philip, uh, used to use that F4 screen to manage their tire temperatures and call that out to each other as a way to save their tires to, to outperform their competition. Um, and, and Blake learned all that uh, from Philip. Philip's actually the originator of that. So uh, that's why we call Blake Mr. F4 Speed, because he would get all of his speed for managing his tire temperatures. There you go. I, I would imagine in, in the Firecracker 400, that's going to be a big factor, tire temps on a long run. Don't you think, Parker? Oh, yeah. It's going to be huge. It's going to be absolutely huge. The tire wear in these cars is immense. Bias plies. It's, uh, it's one of those things where the you know, taking care of tires on these big heavy stock cars it's what we all imagine stock car racing is going to be like when you're moving up to the ranks and this is what it was back in the day you have to take care of those tires it's tire temp it's tire wear and anyone who takes care of the tires better will be faster at the end of the long run here he comes let's see what it's going to be for blake mccandless down to the line he goes eight forty two four six He's got to be happy with that. That's a pickup. I mean, 864, it's still going to be close. He's in the field for now. He went an 88 yesterday, and he was he was right at 43rd. I just want to clarify, like I clarified in chat, the number that I threw out of drivers left to go is who is in the server. I can't account for people who aren't in the server right now. So anyone who's in the server and hasn't run a time, that's the number that I'm using. So if they're not in here yet, yeah, well, and, it is and what they it don't is. show up for their time. They go on. A we, have, we have clock. 20 to go. Yeah, we have 20 to go. I'm sorry. Wait, I, I didn't know that that's your, how you're counting them. So Blake was the 37th driver to go. Jordan here is 38th. And we have 58 on the qualifying order, David. There you go. Um, Maybe not. Talking about Dale, Dale Jr. Now, talking about Dale Jr., Freddie Kraft chimes in on uh, on Twitter with the uh, hashtag Firecracker400. Tuning into the end of the Firecracker400 qualifying again on Landon Castle's Twitch stream, and I swear I can see another bead of sweat form every time a car beats Dale Jr. <laughs> Freddie's been watching. Freddie's watching. This is like watching two promoters. <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's E. Humpy Wheeler over here, Landon Castle. He, he wants his stars in the show. <laughs> Uh, maybe <laughs> that's amazing oh well let's see uh, what Jordan has here we can not say that uh, Blake's lap did knock out Nick Morse unfortunately Jordan was 7 Jordan's coming in from 70th with a 43224 made some hey, good comments about that point scheme I'm still feeling very confident about my bubble what? time. What is it? 4280. Oh, wow, nice wow. lap. That nice was lap not Jordan. expected. That's, it's got to be a pickup. Uh, that's a big pickup. That's a big old pickup. I, I think this wind is helping this, this dri these drivers. The track temp is rising a little bit. It's 137 degrees now, seven miles per hour out of the west on the winds, which is interesting because the last session had a little higher track temp, but it definitely had way less wind. Hmm. The track temp hurt more in the last session. I, don't, I, I think so. It had to have. Yeah, some. I mean, it's something, right? Well, this is one that'll set a good benchmark here. Bob Bryant. E NASCAR. I racing Coca-Cola series driver. It's all this out of a couple of the E NASCAR drivers immediately taking away their time. They feel like, uh, you know, a lot of times they, <laughs> they, they know right away when they have it or not, right? When they've done the lap, these guys are the best of the best of the top of the sim racing world for that exact reason. And like and, that bobble into. Uh, yeah. 213 in turn one. And that he's got his hands full, but it, uh, that has in some sessions, in some cars have meant that that's pretty fast. 
It looks, yeah, it looks like it's lacking some rear stability, but in his hands, I think that's less of a problem than maybe others. Yeah, that's right. Bob is coming from 28th, 42846. That'll be the time he's trying to beat for himself, at least. Uh, I would imagine that he might want a little bit more than that to feel good about his car. That's quick corner speed. He never yeah. dropped below 204. That is yeah, he's right. carrying some big lap. speed. That's a wow, 77. Wow, look at that. 7 7. seven. Wow. All right, what now a I'm worried. Now I'm worried. Now I'm worried about my cutoff. I might be sipping my first White Claw here in a little while. <laughs> <laughs> what a lap by Bob Bryant. Oh, wow. Hmm. Well, that changes things significantly. This is, uh, this is heating up. And unfortunately, that's going to knock out our favorite name in, in this entire event, Nathan Rabbit Rabbit Abadu. 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 Uh, dang. Sorry, Nathan. This is going to uh, be so tight for Mitchell Hunt, yeah. Blake Reynolds, Taylor Hart Jr. I mean, wow. If this continues, we're, we're, we're <laughs> the first couple mm. drivers are literally on pins and needles right now. And I'm not Has feeling it. good about my cutoff time. I'm not. I, I'm not anymore either. I'm starting to feel like my negative energy was coming to fruition. Well, there's nothing good about negative energy. Let's be honest. My sister would say that's just, that's you reap what you sow <laughs> in the universe. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> what you? My Bob wife Ryan calls it. The, my chat. wife calls it the you secret. See Bob in chat. Bob Bryan just chimes in. Tracks I eat. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> wow. That's great. Great for Bob. That's funny. Let's we'll see what Devin Henry can do here as he's halfway down the back straightaway, picking up speed to 12 to 13 and building. When you see a car go out right before you and put a lap down like Bob Bryant is, it has to give you a little bit of confidence, right? Well, you know, the track is there. And uh, for Devin Henry, commentator throughout some iRacing stuff, eSports. He's an Arizona guy. It's, uh, you know, one of those things where he's in this a lot. Wow, I just love how sideways they get there. But it does. It gives you that confidence. He wasn't able to, you know, find that speed out there, but at least let you know, all right, it's not the track that's the problem. Uh, and that's a big pickup for him. I mean, Devin, uh, he ran a 43-22 yesterday. He was 69th. Hmm. Well, that keeps uh, that keeps McCandless and company safe for at least one more car. And next to roll is going to be uh, it's going to be one of your boys, Parker, mm. over from the UK, Peter Bennett. We saw him yesterday with the troubles he had, did not get a lap down, crashing in his attempt to put down a lap. Let's see what he does different here today. Well, and Peter, um, Peter got today off of work which is good because I think that he was able to get some more testing time in and hopefully took a nap. The bad news for Peter is that he has to work tomorrow, which yeah. uh, for us is tomorrow. For him, it's already today. So he's got to go to work here in about five hours, I think. It's very late there, and he's put a lot of effort into this. He wrecked on his outlap into three, so he's made it through three this time. Looked like he was a little <laughs> lower than yesterday. But Peter Bennett, I mean, he uh, he's dedicated himself to this. I love the paint scheme he's got there. That's his his colors from his Twitch channel. Great Twitch streamer there from the UK. Loves American racing. Loves you know doing indie car stuff. That's how he and I met. And uh, definitely feel like you know this is an event that he really desperately wants to be a part of. And I feel like he's had some speed. So I'm interested to see what he pulls off here. Well, he's gotten through one and two up to speed. Down the back straightaway he goes. Speed building in that. Uh, ah, that, is, that is a sharp car. 215. Almost got to 216. Really throws oh, it into three. Missed. I think he missed the entry a little bit. A little high. He pulls it back three down to the to bottom. Lower there. Oh, oh and it's sliding. sliding. Oh, wow. He got it, though. Hold on to it, Peter. That's definitely going to cost uh, him some speed. Uh, 303. Oh my Man. goodness! Oh, he, he was flying, would. and it it starts with missing the entry to three, and he was behind the yeah. rest of the corner. And what we will effort. see him in the Firecracker 200. See a replay on that. Oh, oh man! No. 
contact. Hmm. So what a save. Uh, Parker, David, that that is we're starting to lock drivers in now. So that um, Hurley is locked in. I think that that locked um, Tony Ball. Uh, and as we see Zane Scott on the racetrack, we spoke to him earlier. He's pretty confident about his lap times, Very his confident. potentials. Yeah, he's uh, love to see him slide in there. We would, we would. Um, if you're any of these bubble drivers, you're saying no, thank you. Please go slower. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the ball, and I will say the bubble time is only a couple hundredths off of uh, what I said it would be there, David. With way more cars left to run than I thought there were. Um, so I'm not feeling great about this. Well, I tell you what, if I, if I end up winning this deal and I'm drinking my first White Claw, I will give you a full detailed report on it. I, I might Thank even you. have to do it on stream. I'll do it on that's stream. Perfect. How about that? I, I love that. That's a great, that's a perfect idea. I want to know about it. The so. track temp is just holding it 136 here. I mean, it's hovered kind of in the same spot this entire group of cars. We just lost a mile per hour on the wind, about a degree in the track temp, down to 136. This is actually pretty favorable conditions here. A lot for of speed Zane for Scott. Zane. Is that 217? 217 for Zane. Wow. Which Big Zane was speed right there. Right on the bubble. I mean, he was he was in 42nd. 42815. Great lap Ooh. for Zane. I think he's uh that's about going to that's just about going to lock him in as he's sliding a little bit. Keep it together. Don't want to go to a backup car, Zane. Bumps Reynolds. Hunt some Jr. 30th. down to 38th. Yeah. So that'll move Blake McCandless out. Put Everhart, who stood on his time, now on the cut line. Guys, oh boy. I'm just nervous. I'm nervous right oh boy. now. I'm really nervous. I'm <laughs> <laughs> nervous, too. <laughs> I don't know. This is play. I think this is going to be pins and needles around uh as i said before blake reynolds mitchell hunt dale jr maybe all the way to lisenby just lisenby i mean this is gonna be so tight which then means landon the whole field of the firecracker 400 is gonna be covered by what a tenth and a half yeah i mean pretty much if our if our cutoff time is an eight what was the poll uh this poll is a seven two five joseph galata Basically, it's basically gonna be a tenth and a quarter. Basically, you know, it's uh, it's gonna be nothing. It's it's an insanely tight field for all the different weather conditions, all the different setups from it being open setup. They're gonna be that close. It's just amazing. Let's just take a listen here. another driver adam gordon here got to be looking at opportunity he ran at 856 so he was 36 so i mean just a small pickup for him is going to be worth the time and effort to come back out tonight as opposed to standing looks on good. his time it, it looks, looks really good. good sort of a hard turn Perfect down apron across and that's at 802 that's yeah gonna be wow. really that's a great good. lap that's <clears> a great lap uh-oh that's, that's that's the sort of lap you want, but you know what? That moves everybody down one more. Now uh, Everhart's out. He stood on his time and it failed him. That puts Jake Poulin on the cut line and that moves uh, Blake Reynolds down to 41st. We talked to him. Oh boy. Guys, I just got a delivery. Um, it's going well. Oh, there. yeah. Oh, Things must be nice. Must be nice. Things are great. Shannon's great. Lovely girlfriend. Lovely girl. And now, now, Parker, the track temp is going down uh -oh. 135. That is not music to the ears of those bubble drivers. Wow. Blake Reynolds is, I, I mean, he's got to be just about kissed at goodbye at this point. I mean, and it seems like we've got 
the the, the biggest hitters coming up yeah i mean we still have malik ray dylan gooden has had some speed i mean I, it's briar laprad andrew fayash will cooley uh, so there's a lot of eye rating left to go. to go yeah there's there's a lot of sweating i mean if you're in the towel business you're you're liking right now because you're gonna be selling out of your product hey where did you say what was the name of the short track in independence iowa Oh god, is that, oh, we're, we're, we're back to that independence? one Independence? Oh, I, would, I thought it was independent. Speedway? <laughs> oh, bro, Andy Hunter's oh, around. He's not going to save that one. In the That's wall. in the wall. That would be a backup car. 89. With an 89, but that's in the wall. That would be a backup car for the Firecracker 200 right there. Andy Hunter. That's a hard hit into the outside wall. Fuel cell will be knocked in. Coming off turn four, it's going to head towards the trial. Mark that dip. down for a backup. Yeah, dip down below. Slides up like anyone else, but then just loses it and backs it in the wall. That'll it's like he didn't keep his foot in it to, to spin it down across the to the left of the track instead of uh, bringing it back to the right. I think that's what everyone's been doing. Uh, you got to be comfortable saving a car like that. We've seen some dramatic slides across the line, but I think he just got it wrong. All right, Lane, let's update everyone. How many cars left? <clears throat> well, we're at Malik Ray right now, which means he's the 45th to go. So we got about 13 cars to go. 13. Oh, man. <laughs> not feeling, not feeling good. I'm starting to think if you're Josh Parker, Justin Lisenby. Nah. Dale Jr., oh, Mitchell Hunt, Blake Reynolds. It might be over. So this is, this is why we put it. Yeah. Why we broadcast it, right? I mean, this, this is why is we dead. broadcast it. This, this is not boring stuff. There's a lot of drama, a lot of intrigue to this, and this is why we're all here to watch. Great. Great talented driver in the e nascar coca-cola i racing series for joe gibbs racing joe gibbs gaming uh and great overall twitch streamer great personality in the series a lot of fun has that rowdy energy sponsorship around a lot of his cars that he races in love watching this guy race love watching his streams he's overall just a good guy I've raced against him a lot he's very talented though let's see what kind of speed he brings here on this lap Oh, pretty 2808. Wow. That was definitely to be expected. Bumps cooling out. Rasmus on the bubble. Blake Reynolds. Guys, Dale oh Jr. Boy. Mitchell Hunt. 40th. Dale Jr. 40th. 40th right now. Not good. <laughs> pretty much mm. every car that is gone is running in the low 80s here. This this might be where this session is just getting faster and faster. This is see so this is the trend, right? So we talked about it in the beginning of this qualifying session here tonight where we saw a couple cars here and there going faster and you really felt like all right, those were guys that maybe messed up. They didn't have it yesterday, but now what we're seeing is a bit of a trend. We are seeing that this time of day, this weather settings, where we've gotten to here is looking faster than what we had earlier in the session. So this is uh, this is going to be tense, very tense for some of these drivers that probably left you know, the beginning of this, that went earlier that felt like or stood on their time. I'm good. I'm fine. And now they're seeing this and thinking, man, maybe I should have re-ran. Yeah, Dale Jr. there in the chat speaking up, saying <laughs> session two is way better than than, uh, than that first half. Uh, you know, I, I hate to break it to you, Dale, but... Um... 
I mean, it's this is this was the real weather in Daytona today. It was hot at about 12:30 when we sent those first couple cars out. About one o'clock, 1:30, the sun started moving. The winds came in, blew some of the humidity out of the air. It's 58% humidity right now, seven miles an hour winds. Track temp is just a little bit cooler. The sun's maybe not quite as much of an angle and this uh, not, not as steep on the racetrack. 2.18 p.m. in the server right now. It's Craig Arvanitas completing his lap here. We'll see. That's this, He's been pretty quick around this racetrack. I've just been watching. Down to the line he goes. 9-3. Huh? I thought it was quicker than that. Wow. He lost some time he, somewhere. He, it looked like the speed was good. You, you dodged another bullet. <laughs> Parker, I'm trying to think of a way you can pull us out so you can finally be best friends with them. I well, I know as a promoter, we're uh, we're searching for every way possible. We're not quite able to find it this time because there's nothing we can do. This was up to the competitors. Doesn't matter if you're Dale Jr. It doesn't matter if you're uh, you know just a normal amateur eye racer that's getting onto this for the first time. Everyone has an equal opportunity in these e-racer events, which is it starts where everyone starts in the same position, no matter what you have done, no matter what your accomplishments are, accomplishments are in real life or sim racing. And then you have to work your way through the system, through this almost tournament bracket style style of racing to get yourself to the big show, which is going to be the Firecracker 400. Beautiful Ventrack car here for Christian Sanford from Hicksville, North New York. Look at that thing. They're also the sponsor of our Ventrack blowover, which you'll see in the Firecracker 200 and 400, which is every time a car spins out and flies through the air because they blew over, we get a count, another word, or another count on the Ventrack <laughs> blowover count. A little sideways. We haven't seen a Ventrack blowover in qualifying yet, even though I do think it was it's close possible. yesterday. It was close. Garrett Smithy was close, but it wasn't quite one. He did pick the right side tires up. Yeah. It wasn't even a growl over either. No. That was what about the really got me. Yeah. <laughs> Dale still <laughs> thinks he's going about 49th. I don't know. I think this is still going to be tight. We'll see. We'll see. Track temps uh -oh. 136. Oh, he's back. He's back. Chris the Stamper little... uh, jumped for a sec. <laughs> little internet things. You know, you'll have Went a little you know. loose right there for Christian. Yeah. Whoa. Hang on to it. You know he's still in the gas. Oh, oh boy. The apron. He saved it. That's going to hurt his speed, though. His exit speed down here on the front stretch not going to be too good. The yeah. 997, not going to be happy there. Nope, that is not going to get done. That is going to be a Firecracker 200 time right there. Not a 400. Parker, you sound excited. What? You sound <laughs> excited. Excited, man. This is getting interesting. I mean, hey, this is, this is incredible. We are watching you know drivers out here that have put a lot of time and effort uh into this event that are laying it all down on their final lap of you know ability to get into the big show the firecracker 400 which uh, in its first year will eventually become synonymous with i racing in the years to come if atlanta and i have anything to do about it so you know this is uh something we want to continue on for years and i want you know, these drivers participating the first time know this is going to be a prestigious situation to get into that Firecracker 400. So, so many of them want in. Put aside the uh, the large prize pool. This is, uh, you know, I just, I sense talking to all these drivers and listening to the chat and seeing all the things they've been talking about to each other and all the things on social media that so many want to be in this race. They want it desperately. Uh, and, you know, some will come up short, and that's what's uh, making this so exciting. I like the excitement. Keep it up, man. All right. Deal. I like it. I Deal. like it. Well, last fellow night, screamer on the track. NG underscore Kibbs. I think that's Kenny Kibby. That is Kenny Kibby. Good job. Yeah, he's a member of uh, Nocturnal Gaming. Does that mean they race at night? night? Yeah. Oh, you guys, uh, you jinx, you, you owe each other a Coca-Cola, apparently. <laughs> Pretty decent corner right there for Kenny. He's got a long ways to go, though, from 81st. I don't know. This is not a bad look. And just didn't have the speed. 
43-23. Mm. Definitely a pickup for Kenny. Looks like he worked on his car. We have nine cars to go. Nine! Next, next up is... We're going to see Dylan Gooden next. Driving the Castle Motors house car. Oh, give us the jingle. Come on. Oh. You're so, you're so good at Motors, it. It is your friend in the car business. It is your ah. friend in the car. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan was texting me before the session, uh, before qualifying started. He sent me some um, some eight flats that he had run. Oh, so let's really? see what Dylan's got here. But can he do it when it matters? I've hit yeah. plenty of long drives off the driver range. Oh, very sure. Rarely do I ever do it off the tee box? So let's see it, Dylan. Bring it. I'm telling you, I've, I've that... run so many pole laps uh, by myself with nobody else around. It's I probably it's have a trophy coming my way. It's yeah. probably a world record, if I'm being honest with you. I, I would not disagree. If uh, you know how many times have I won cup races in my dreams? Many. So <laughs> how many do I have in actuality? Zero. But we'll see. Come on, Dylan, bring it. All right, pressure's on, Dylan. Let's see you deliver here. I, you know, I'd be careful about telling people what kind of what kind of times I was running because then you go out <laughs> and you don't back it up, and oh, that's not a good look, man. This is not a good look. So, see that car bouncing pretty good, but he's got a nice low line. Really? Three off the corner. Dylan went at 88 yesterday, and he was 44th. So I feel like that's probably a no-brainer for him. Uh, guys, the bubble time is 1-1,000th off my prediction. Uh, right ah, now, you hate so. to hear it. Yeah, it's, this isn't looking good. <laughs> I think a corner speed, I thought. Dylan's lap is looking good. Yeah, I yep. think Dylan's lap looks pretty good here. It does. Eight, oh, two, wow, four. Yeah. Wow. That puts him. Wow. Uh, 36. That is, wow. that might put him in the show. That's, uh, I was gonna, that might, he might be 43rd. The Rasmus is out. That knocks him to the pole of the Firecracker 200. Blake Reynolds, 43rd place on the bubble right now. Mitchell Hunt, mm. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in 41st. Josh Parker, Justin Lizenby. I mean, this is heavy hitters right at the back of the Firecracker 400, right on the bubble right now. Mm. We, uh, guys, so we, we should mention we are on a five minute clock for Trevor Perry. A couple Perry drivers right on the clock. Yep. So I think, you know what, guys? <clears throat> you know what I loved is some of these videos and promos we've made. So guess what? Why don't we take a look at one of them right now? At this point in the season, which is exactly halfway through the year, each of the drivers has learned to play his particular role and play it very well. For example, Dale Earnhardt. He's the tough guy, mean and feared, and he likes it that way. Today, he starts from fifth place. Or how about Darrell Waltrip, current national champion? Typecast is brash and outspoken, while off camera he shows a softer side. After blowing an engine in practice, he'll start 23rd. Bill Elliott, last year's leading man, with win after win. This year, he seemed to have mislaid the script, until suddenly he won big three weeks ago. Today, he starts second. The car is rumbling out of turn four into the trioval. The pace car is away, and the firecracker 400 is moments away from receiving the green flag.
Well, guys. Yeah. Love it. I'm feeling it. Awesome. Let's go. Let's, Let's finish this out. One. We got a we got a couple drivers left to go. We got a pretty tense bubble right now. Dale Jr.'s only got two spots that he can give up. Mitchell Hunt, Blake Reynolds, who probably uh, maybe kissed it goodbye already, you think? You can just about count on we have a this couple driver drivers right here. Who maybe have not entered the server yet, so that could change things. How many are left? It looks like three have not entered. So it's How about five or left? six drivers left. We got five or six left, maybe. Five or six, and does that count the three that have not entered, or the three that have entered? Or that? Um, well, this is Andrew Fayash is on track, so that's Trevor Perry. We have to say did not make it in his five-minute clock, so he. So is there's not including including Andrew. There's eight drivers remaining. When you said there's three more three that have not showed up in the server. Including Trevor. Including Trevor. About six to go. Six. Mm. All right. It's tense. What'd you say Dale needed before? He needed a, a bat 500? Basically, <laughs> yeah, he needs better than that. <laughs> he needs a little better than 500. He can only give it up to give two of them. Fayash went a 46 30. It was 85th first round qualifying so oh that didn't oh, help him. He the grass. he still the oh grass. no clip the grass how much time did that cost him how much time did that cost him it That's... had to be i mean it had to be a couple of hundreds because he clipped it too early and the car got sideways you started to hear the tires squeal that was uh that was the you know the fear many probably had of going down there and trying to get that line right below the apron or on the apron oh, which no. is when you go and touch that grass it can spin that car around Oh my, that's you. Yeah, you're flirting with disaster right there. He clipped that. I mean, they definitely, definitely cost him some time. Could it be the difference? You know. Oh, definitely. Oh boy, that's... Mm. Man, I really would have thought Andrew had some tough luck yesterday in qualifying. Didn't get a lot. Didn't get a clean lap in. Congratulations to Dylan Gooden in the chat there. Locked himself in the field. Watch this Gator Gator ride from Steph Marinak. He's coming from 78th, so he ran a 43-33 yesterday. One of those uh, no-brainer decisions you have to make another run. That's right, but we've seen a couple big pickups from deep in the field. 213 to 14 into turn one. That's a pretty good. That's some pretty good speed right there. Oh, a little bobble. He's a Steph. little darty though. A little darty. Still good Hang speed though. Definitely carrying some speed. We saw that, you know, with Gorlinski. Car looked a lot worse than it was. 216 at the end of the straightaway. Oh man, but that's Very. a lot of bobble. Very unstable. A lot of speed. 202 down on exit there. See if the straightaway speed can make up for what he lost through the corners. 93, nope. it looks like. Not going to nope. cut it for Steph. Not going to cut it. Still a good pickup. The whole field is just tightened up. I mean, I'm looking on my sheet right now, and I've got 15 drivers that all ran in a 43.30s yesterday that uh, were just... Mo moved all those up to 43 flats. We are getting down to crunch time, guys. Just a couple mm. cars left on the bubble. Blake Reynolds, Enascar Coco I Racing Series driver for Team Dylan Esports. Mitchell Hunt, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in 41st. 41st. Josh Parker, who also races in Enascar uh, NASCAR Heat Series. Uh, Justin Lizenby. I mean, this is this is getting intense. Yeah, it's so there's going down right now. There's six drivers to go. I think that there's uh, five in the server. I, I, you know, we've done a horrible job at being able to tell who's in the server and who's not. <laughs> uh, but there's six drivers to go. I think there's one driver, maybe Brian Mullen, who people had said was not coming or was not going to make it. 
Um, that last run, by the way, locked Dylan Gooden in. So the big sigh of relief for him. Buy the pad here. Sponsored yeah, by looking at another supply. one of your drivers. Yeah, one of the Burton Clean Esports drivers. Didn't quite have the speed yesterday. Longtime sponsor of hers there, Ledford Billiard Supply. Great group. You can check them out, ledfordbilliardsupply.com. They, uh, they sell all your pool needs, pool table needs, I should say, and game room needs. Let's see if this has the speed down the back stretch. 15. I like the line into three. I like that line into Looking three. Good. He Hold that little bump there. Oh, he's carrying great speed off of four. 204, 203, That's 204. That's going to be good. That might do it for Briar. Let's speed see. The line. It's going to be close. 802. Oh, wow. Never mind. Wow. What a lap. 42.80. Any good. Oh, man. Patriot so Briar. Wow. What a lap. What a lap. Puts him up to 25th. Excellent. Excellent work there. That's a huge pickup. That is big. Really big. Of drivers in the eight O's. This is wild, guys. Absolutely there goes Blake wild. Reynolds. <laughs> that Blake Reynolds is out. Blake Reynolds. Out. Coke series out. driver. Out of the field. Wow. Mitchell oh Horn on the cut line now. Gosh. Yeah. Mitchell Hunt now cannot feel good. Kyle Trudell was coming from 80th. They had a 43-38 yesterday. So he's have to pick up a lot here today. So when I look at things, guys, this is going to be very touch and go for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Very, very. It comes down to essentially there's probably one and a fringe, one person who went faster than him yesterday left and one person who ran a little bit slower. He can't afford two people to beat him. Mitchell Hunt can't afford one. I think he's going to be knocked out here with our, some of our next drivers. Let's see if Kyle Trudell can pick up a ton from yesterday. Maybe he's worked on things. Maybe he's found some setup, made some technical alliances in that all blue car. No sponsor on there right now. If you're looking for someone to sponsor in the Firecracker 400 slash Firecracker 200 event. Looks like he did buy one of your old fire suits on eBay, though. He does though. have Valvoline there. I like that. That's a key. Good on him. <laughs> Good Good speed off of turn four, but he, 43 nah. 25, that's not going to cut it. Nah. It's a 10 pickup from yesterday, but it's not enough. Yeah. All right. So that's time for one of those uh, Radius 1K cars. Yeah. So this is Jared Ickes, I believe, is the next one to go. Should be yesterday. He ran a 42,870. So Oof. right now, I believe this is, what this, is the bubble at right now? It's an 859, 858. 859. Any pickup at all for Jared? Any eight, really eight, just 50. Oh, it's bubble time. If Jared can just back up what he did yesterday, um, lap wise, you would think the track conditions will just play into his favor here. Mm -hmm. It's possible. Track track temps come down to 135. possible this is, Brian be, this, did, is the one, uh, this is the one i think if dale jr and mitchell hunt can beat then they are in a far better position Which brian mullen did connect to the server brian mullen is finally connected there's still keith jeffrey left to go and will cooley 208 at the line for jared to 14 into one holds a nice line through one and two. Oh, that's going to be good. That's, that's going to be good. That's this is going to put Dale Jr. on the bubble. Oh, I don't think he could afford this one. I don't think so either. 216 at the end of the straightaway. Run. Not with Will Cooley coming up. That thing is rotating. 
Ah, oh, that's a nice line right there. That is a beautiful line. Jared Ickes in the radius 1K is going to put it in the show. Oh, my goodness. At a what a 42, lap. 8, 1, 12. What a lap. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is on the bubble with three cars to go. Oh, boy. The three drivers uh, above the cut line all stood on their times. No, so that's Lizenby. Parker and Dale Jr. Oh, brother. How, how much drama do you like with your racing boys? Uh, I, this is, this is a lot. This is a lot right now. <laughs> oh man. I, I fully expect to see Landon reaching for his phone as Junior is just uh, blowing him up, I would imagine. <laughs> wow, I mean, we wanted drama. We got it, <laughs> I guess. You wanted we it, got you got it. it. This we is it. it. <laughs> this is, this is, is, I mean, you could write this storyline. You could not predict that we would be looking at this storyline right now. And imagine if you're Keith Jeffrey, you go out and you put down a lap that knocks Dale Earnhardt Jr. out of the Firecracker 400. How conflicted you might feel. I'd say tough for him. Tough luck. I, that, you know, yeah. Sorry. I, ho I hope that Keith Jeffrey isn't even thinking about it. I nope. hope he's playing his lap that. through his mind. 214 into turn one. It's a beauty of an entry to turn one. Car's nice on the yellow line there. 203 on exit. This one might race its way in. Qualify its way in. But I knew what you meant. Qualify. <laughs> right on the bottom. Little little rotation right there. Might have cost him some speed. It looks like little oh, couple of wobbles there. Speed. He's high. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's gonna you know what that's going to do for him. All the rest of the lap looks good, but. 918. Nope. 918. Oh, man. And you can't help but to think that he had it up until that point. And he had a 903 yesterday. Uh, and it leaves Junior on the bubble. So we have Mullen and Cooley left to go. And yeah. I do believe that Mullen has made the server. That's Mullen He's, right there. It is. He's there, yep. ready to roll. He, he did a 42972 yesterday. But Cooley is definitely the one here that I think is to be. He did an 8-3-3 yesterday. Oh, boy. So we'll see. On board hmm. Brian Mullen. This is going to be close, guys. Rocking the Spider-Man suit. Goes by Spider-Man. Peter Parker. Always a great name. Great last name. Good last name or good first name? Oh, he's got a great last name. Because it makes a great first name? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, guys, I'm, I'm speechless right now because I'm not even sure what to say. I mean, we're watching this and uh, I mean, I, I just never thought this bubble time would be below a mid eight. That is just absolutely insane. Brian Mullen takes the green flag. It's going to be 212, 213, 214 into turn one. That's pretty quick. High on the one and two, but. Man, oh, cut the apron off two. A little bit. It looked like he held some pretty good speed, though, I thought. Yeah. But he definitely touched the apron to see if that maybe scrubbed a little bit, maybe used a little extra racetrack. Definitely did. He yeah, didn't quite two. get the 215. See, that car looks pretty good, though. I don't know. There's a lot of bouncing going on. 202. He's a slide. Oh, slide. Oh, save it. Big slide. Big yeah, slides. this is going to be it. It's going to come down to Cooley. And it. 978. Oh, and, and it's good. down to one. Last car. Will Cooley with a 6,600 I rating. Did an 833 yesterday. Guys. You can't script this. You literally could oh, unbelievable. Dale Earnhardt Jr. on the bubble. Will Cooley from Spartanburg, South Carolina. The track temp has fallen to 134 degrees.
That should be in his favor. What do we have on the weather? It's seven miles per hour of winds out of the west. This is all enough? he needed. The yes, humidity is down. Up what he did yesterday. If he just runs what he did yesterday, he's in. Oh, man. Up to David, the gear. What's your thoughts? Will, uh, it is, hang on, Parker. Is Will more nervous knowing what's at stake here with his lap? Not just for himself. Absolutely. Oh, it has to be. Has to be. How could you it's not be? One of the world's most popular race <laughs> drivers, most famous race drivers of all time. Now, the infra Paul resolutions Davey, car, nonetheless. And the infra resolutions car, meaning <laughs> the title too many the event. There's too many storylines here. Let's let's. Uh, let's a little see. high let's coming to green, Parker. That was he was high coming to green there. I mean, we didn't. There was a lot of drivers and not let's benefit see. from being that high. Two fourteen into turn one. It's not the super high. Oh, that's a oh, good exit. Two oh four off two. Look at that. This is good. This is really this is good. good. He's Here a former he NASCAR driver from 2017. Finished 24th in the 2019 Pro Series. 16 into three. This is the gotta lap. Execute. Oh. Just got to execute right here. Just got to get off turn four. I think he's got That's it. Solid. He's got it. That's Who's the it gonna lap. Be? Will Cooley. Down to the line. Eight, Eight one, 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 one. He got it. Wow. Dale Jr. will now be on the pole for the Firecracker 200 and is knocked out of the Firecracker 400 by oh Will Cooley. Goodness. What a moment in his career. What an incredible moment in sim racing, iRacing history, and Firecracker 400 history. Guys, that was an intense two days. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be a wild pair of races. Wow. Well, I mean, these crazy. guys have so much invested in these cars and in this race. As, a, as we hear, Josh Mendoza over race control is uh, calling for security to uh, Will Cooley's car. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the virtual Will's race reporting. fans are coming out of the woodwork right now. He says that beer cans are, are pegging his car. We are going to allow him to repair any beer can dents on the side of his car. Mm. Unbelievable. What drama. I mean, like you said, right? you could not script this. You could not imagine this was what it would come down to after eight preliminary races uh, and fixed setup, then switching over to open setup, doing two days of single car qualifying, one lap, and coming down to the last driver to determine who is in the 400 and the driver being knocked out being Dale Earnhardt Jr. I mean, come on. That storyline was in nobody's mind. At, at Dale says, point. I hate you, Landon. <laughs> Dale just, <laughs> just twitched and I said, I hate you, Landon. Cooley don't need security. I know he all doesn't, you, Dale. All you need is just one, two more degrees probably on that racetrack and uh, and it's all good. You know, I, I think oh that uh, I, I, I feel like uh, Will Cooley ought to be driving the filter time car on Wednesday since we're not going to, since, you know, we got to have that thing in the field somehow. It's got info resolutions oh. on it. I mean, at least Junior's going to have a great view of the start of the Firecracker 200, right? He'll be leading him to the green flag as the pole sitter. So not all is lost there. Um, and that, I mean, the firepower, the star power in the Firecracker 200. I mean, it's 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 the support race, but there are some huge names in that race. Don't let the fact that it's not the 400 dissuade you from watching, supporting, or being a part of it because there are some absolutely enormous names from across the service in that race. I that's a great point, David. It's actually, it's going to be next Monday, July or June 29th, right ahead of the Firecrack 400. It still pays $500 to win. You get your money back just for starting it. It pays all the way throughout the field. It's going to be a very big race as well. We'll be broadcasting the whole thing here on the same channels on uh, on June 29th. So join us on June 29th around 7.30 p.m., I believe, Landon. And uh, we'll have that race with Dale Jr. on the pole. Well, in the booth with us, we have the man that will start. The myth, the legend. The, the Firecracker 400. No, it's not Dale Earnhardt Jr. It is Will Cooley, who just put together 
one beauty of a lap to close out this session will walk us through your feelings from the time from the moment you were sitting on pit road i mean in fairness i'd, I'd rather be junior if that makes it any better for him <laughs> I, was a, I was a little nervous going to pit road just because i saw a couple of times the guys ahead of me uh, weren't quite as good as i thought but i knew <laughs> Uh, when I saw session three last night and how a lot of those guys were really picked up, I knew if I just waited and um, I know I'd have the last uh, the last draw today, I knew that'd be a really good track. So I was a little nervous. Uh, I actually did not know he was on the bubble. I knew that was a possibility. Uh, I maybe would have been a little more nervous if I knew that he was the 43rd guy when I went out. But uh, I felt like we, we had it and we were probably going to pick up a little bit from last night. So uh, I wasn't, wasn't too stressed out about it. So... Talk me through. You had an, an 8.33 yesterday. You decided to, you know, basically elect to rerun. You're watching all these times there. You mentioned how you felt like it would get faster later on and everything. But was there ever a point there you're looking at some of these times where you were getting pretty nervous thinking, I don't know if I can throw down a time like I did yesterday or even faster? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I was watching Lizenby, and I knew he was going to be kind of close, and I knew I was somewhere close to him. And at first I was thinking, man, maybe I should have just stayed pat. But – the, the closer it got down to it, and I saw that track him drop, drop into, I knew, uh, like, either way, even if I had sat on my time or if I went back out there, that I was going to be okay. But um, I was definitely curious where that 833 was going to put me. But uh, thankfully, we did a little bit better tonight. Well, good luck in the race, Will. <clears throat> good luck on Wednesday in the 400. Keep it in one piece. No resets. You get one car. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. Uh, thanks to Seth and Merchant for putting in a, a lot of hard work and carrying the load. And uh, sorry to Dale. Don't say sorry to him. Say sorry to uh, Junior Nation. Oh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry <laughs> Junior Nation. That's all right. There you go. We still get to see Dale race, though. He will be in the Firecracker 200 on Monday. He'll be rolling off on the pole. So that'll be uh, yeah. that'll be a lot of fun. Will, it was great having you and uh, great job today. Thank you, guys. Good luck, bud. Hey, guys, you know what we do have? We do have, out of all, so let's think about this. We had Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Garrett Smithley. <clears throat> correct me if I'm missing anyone. We had Ron Caps, um, Ed Carpenter. Ed Carpenter. TJ Majors, Kevin Hamlin. From the real racing world that all attempted, right, to make it to the Firecracker 400. Guess who made it? William, William Byron. Byron Jr. William Byron. <laughs> so you can still see a NASCAR driver and a driver from the real world that uh, that made it into the Firecracker 400. But that's, I mean, that's pretty crazy when you think about it. Where we started a couple weeks ago to where we are now, William Byron will be that sole NASCAR driver in the Firecracker 400. Dale Hurt Jr. leading the field to green in the Firecracker 200. This is going to be a crazy week next week. I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm well, with you on that. I, I can't wait for it as well. Monday is going to be great with the 200, and it all leads into the 400 as well, which has so much firepower in that race too. And and no resets, 400 miles. I uh, Just, you know, that's racing. That's what we come out for. That's what we watch for. That's why we get so excited. And I, I will admit myself, I will say, I didn't know what to expect to sit here and watch single car qualifying for six hours or whatever we've done over the past two nights, but it has been so enjoyable. It has been so entertaining, so fun to watch so much drama. And I hope everyone who tuned in to watch felt the same way because we're up here watching We're we we're sim racers. We love the sport. We love what we do and the drivers are just as passionate. And I think that's what has made this so special up to this point. And now we get into the real meat and potatoes of this thing, the races themselves. I can't wait. Let's get going. It's awesome. All hey, right. Real quick, real quick yep. before we, we uh, send off, yep. I just have to say Ben Klein here on the Facebook chat had a pretty funny comment. He essentially said he, uh, if you had made a movie with this exact scenario, I'd turn it off because it's that unbelievable. And I think it's a great <laughs> note to end this qualifying, two round qualifying on. Take it away, Landon. Hey, thank you guys. David Shieldhouse, Parker Kligerman. I'm Landon Castle. And for the Infra Presents, fire, the Firecracker 400, we are racing next. 200 miles on June 29th for the Firecracker 200 and 400 miles of Firecracker 400 on July 1st. Tune in. We love you all. I'm going to send you to Casey Kerwin after a word from some, some motivating words and sounds, I suppose. How about that?
this point in the season, which is exactly halfway through the year, each of the drivers has learned to play his particular role and play it very well. For example, Dale Earnhardt, he's the tough guy, mean and feared, and he likes it that way. Today, he starts from fifth place. Or how about Darrell Waltrip, current national champion? Typecast is brash and outspoken, while off camera he shows a softer side. After blowing an engine in practice, he'll start 23rd. Bill Elliott, last year's leading man, would win after win. This year, he seemed to have mislaid the script, until suddenly he won big three weeks ago. Today, he starts second. The car is rumbling out of turn four into the tri -oval. The pace car is away, and the Firecracker 400 is moments away from receiving the green flag. is out. They're in the final lap. 